about much government in Nigeria. I don't want the only media that have been, that have been consistent speaking against the bad government and for the purpose for reform. Major what yo people thank you very much for your time with us we are back here again how are you guys doing my wonderful people let's do this together thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you yes i thought i should quickly say something before we start playing our videos right here okay uh let me start with the people right there quickly on the comment section before the comment section get packed you know i notice this sometimes when i play videos before i come back acknowledging people the comment section don't fool but meanwhile, I'd like to quickly acknowledge those of you, those of you that are already here with us. Mother of all, Mommy Diaspora, good evening to you, Mommy. Thank you very much for all you do. I appreciate you always, always, always. Thank you very much, my wonderful people right there. I can see I do like watch right there with us. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening to you, Jim Taiwo. Thank you. Watch it to your Thank you, Obiajilu in the building. Thank you very much for joining us. Promise to do busy. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate every one of you, my people. Divine Joy is right there with us as well. Thank you, my wonderful people. Good evening to you all and happy new week to every one of you right there. Thank you very much, Osai Bovo Okonga right there just coming in. Thank you. I appreciate you all. We have some exciting news for you guys today, but I'm going to break that news in the middle of the broadcast. I appreciate you all. Patience, Alien Ruwa. Thank you very much for joining us, madam. I appreciate you. Guys, press on the like button help us to share. Yes, the ad... We, we all have been calling for the suspension of this man called Ganduji. Gandoji. Is it Gandoji or how did they pronounce it? Gandoji. Is it that? I, I don't know. This name is very difficult to pronounce, you know. Yeah, see, maybe somebody can help me pronounce it later on the panel. I'm not too sure, you know, but I believe it's Gandoji. I, I, I don't know. But nevertheless, <laughs> I appreciate every one of you, my wonderful people. Thank you very much for your time with us. Please help us to press on that like button and let's do this together. Help us to share as well. Let our voices go far. 
you know we have a very very tough topic to talk about today i appreciate you all my wonderful people i can see more people coming in right now i'm doing my sharing it's good you guys do your sharing as well so that other people will know we are right here thank you very much i can see larry Depo. thanks for joining us prince i can see you thanks very much for joining us good evening to you thank you very much but meanwhile before we move on i'd like us to quickly go to our eyes you know i don't want us to spend much time today let's go to our eyes and listen to what is currently going on audio is back so we missed her it's good to see her back again so let's listen to her but meanwhile i have more people coming in right now we have ray abwa in the building ray abwa what's up what's waiting this up what did they happen for your side good evening to you sir thank you very much see excel i can see right there thank you very much yes yeah, so today is a great day by god's grace it is it is it is we need to be grateful to god for everything you know i appreciate every one of you my wonderful people that god will bless us Chidema in the building thank you very much for joining us thank you my wonderful people thank you, you see now i don't acknowledge everybody finish peacefully without no rush or anything and yeah, they like and like this you acknowledge people just move on uh mr justin the man in the building Mr. So Justin, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate every one of you that blessed me yesterday with everything you guys said. Eh? I'm not sure I'll tell you the but I just want to say I'm grateful. Now, God will bless you now. Thank you very much, my wonderful people. Don't worry, I will spend time with you guys today. I have recovered back my energy by God's grace. So we are going to be here to talk for, for a long time today. So let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. But meanwhile, let's quickly listen to this. Powers! <laughs> Download it. <laughs> We're downloading the power. Why not? Well, all right. <laughs> Let's begin what's trending. Over the weekend, the sentencing of popular cross-dresser Idris Okunaya, also known as Bob Risky, to six months in jail without the option of paying a fine for defacing the Naira, reverberated across social media, eliciting controversy, especially after several videos emerged, showing prominent Nigerians engaging in the same act, including the governor of Niger State, Mohamed Uma Bago, who was seen in a now viral video throwing wads of Naira notes to residents as he drove along the streets of Mina in Niger State. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. Well, that's the governor of Niger State there throwing words of Naira. You know, he's loved by his people, but, you know, obviously it has caused a lot of reactions. Um, well, since the emergence of that video, the question on the lips of many Nigerians has been, will the EFCC display the same zeal which, which they arrested and prosecuted Bob Risky so as to deter government officials and politicians from defacing the Naira, although the governor enjoys immunity from prosecution? while in office, well, since the arrest and sentencing of Bob Risky, the EFCC and the court has come under heavy criticism, especially given that Bob Risky was a first-time offender and had also pled guilty to the charge. Some Nigerians have described the action of the anti-graft agency as abuse of power, while the EFCC, in a statement released on Sunday, attempted to clear the air. Their statement reads in part, EFCC press statement, on the issue of the works of the Commission against Naira abuse, dollarization of the economy, and the enforcement of all extant laws relating to them, the EFCC appreciates the avalanche of public awakening, support, and involvement demonstrated so far. Increasingly, members of the public are drawing the attention of the Commission to video recording of abuse of Naira by Nigerians from all walks of life. These gestures demonstrate rising consciousness of the public to the sanctity of our national currency and the need for collaborative engagement to sustain the tempo. To this end, the Commission will always investigate and prosecute everyone involved in the abuse of Naira, old videos being exhumed and flying around for the attention of the Commission, 
are noted as the commission is sensitive to the fact that its special task force against Naira abuse and dollarization of the economy commenced operations on February 7, 2024. However, going forward, new videos of such infractions will be investigated and prosecuted. At the moment, the commission is investigating several celebrities involved in Naira abuse. Many of them have made useful statements to the commission, and many more have been invited by investigators working on the matter. The EFCC will not relent in its no sacred cow mode of operations, and the public should be wary of running afoul of laws against the crime. Well, are you, as you can see, the EFCC here is saying that this happened, I mean, this law commenced yeah. uh, in February, actually February 7th. But if you recall, uh, Bob Risky is actually not the first to face well, this was. whole thing. Uh, do you remember the actress? Yeah. She was a Yoruba actress yeah. that was arrested yeah. back in Fe February. She may go in February. January. Yes. She was also Between sentenced. Between January and February, she was, yes. No, it was January. Yeah. I'm very sure. Yeah. Uh, she was convicted and given the So if it was in January, time. the AFCC is saying that it commenced in February. And that's the question out there um, at this point. Because she was not given the sentence since she was given the option of paying a fine. fine yeah. But, you know, that video of Bago right there, is, yes. you know, it sends a loud message at this point because obviously he's a government official. We're not sure when that video was released. Yeah. I mean, the people that posted that video were talking about the fact that it was during the Salah break and yeah. he was giving out money. But also, I mean, I'm not sure this is a good uh, signal from the governor at this point. Throwing money to people on the streets. Not at all. I, uh, From Abago of Niger State. Well, let's talk about Idris Onlariwaju Okuneye, mm -hmm. popularly referred to as Bobriski, and what a number of people have criticized as almost um, it, it, um, the, the highest level of hypocrisy and um, a targeting beyond what is just on the surface of him abusing Naira. And I think that's what has um, got a lot of people and made a lot of people quite upset. That if what is good for the goose should mm -hmm. be good for the gander. If you're going to have um, implement a particular law and criminalize something, like obviously provision by law, then it should be the same across all boards. Mm -hmm. I know they're saying that, oh, they're getting information from other celebrities. We don't want just celebrity convictions. We want convictions across board and to show that every Nigerian is Nigerian the same way that the other person is Nigerian. Absolutely. Not in a different way because, number one, he is a bit louder or they don't like certain things about him. We shouldn't have laws that are used to witch hunt or to target certain people. It should be, I think it's that, it's that fairness that a lot of people criticize. There's nothing wrong with security agencies implementing a particular law and serving punishment as a when due. It only raises eyebrows when it seems like there is some sort of exclusivity when it comes to the implementation of a particular law. Um, OG, a number of us go for parties almost every weekend. If you were to pick Nigerians up, would have only half the population of even Lagosians alone walking on the streets. I'm not justifying breaking any law. If it is, as, as is stipulated in law, that it's an abuse of Naira, then let the EFCC in their investigations round up everybody and sentence them. I think what the grouse for a number of people is that it is... Um, it seems like it's targeting, it is unfair, and if it's justice, it ought to be fair to all. Yeah. But in terms of this, on the, on the flip side of things, I must say that this has served as a huge deterrent. Mm -hmm. I've been to some events in the last, you know, in the last few days yeah. where people have said, ah, please, I don't want them to arrest me. Yeah. And have. So it's been a deterrent to a number of people. And right. that's the case, then it's, it's successful. Yeah, I have seen videos of people that are just like handing out. Yeah, just giving you the money like rather than quick so money. A number of issues here. Yeah. One, it's a matter of law. People are saying this is selective judgment. Yeah. Okay? And they are saying that for two reasons. Because it looks like something that is cultural. Everybody sprays money. So why uh, Bob Risky, Idris Okune, that's his name, but popularly known as uh, Bob Risky, he or she, mommy of Lagos. No, he said he's a he at this point. <laughs> okay. During sentencing, he did <laughs> he, say he's he, a he. He told the All right. Justice Awubaro. Let's make that and clear. And the uh, <laughs> Ikoyi prison officials have confirmed yes. that upon due examination, they can confirm that he's a man. See, he, yeah, but uh, you know, this it, is about gender identity and all of that. But look, his main defense was that he was not aware. People should know that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. If you commit the offense, you, you could be taken. Two, Justice Awogboro is being blamed for going the whole way. Mm -hmm. Because in uh, January, there was another case involving a lady called uh, Simi Gold. 
Simi Gold <clears throat> was given the uh, option of a fine by the Court of uh, Justice and Equi. And people are saying, oh, why is uh, Justice Awuboro, you know, going, uh, giving the maximum uh, uh, sentence? No. The, the, the sentencing is at the discretion of the court of law. So you can't say the judge uh, erred in law, whatever, uh, because of uh, what he gave. It. But the main issue, the people saying that, is because the conviction is the fact. Once you have been convicted, that is, you know, the major thing with regard to felony. Number three, <coughs> people are also now saying, what is next for uh, Bob Risky? Well, what is next for him is that his lawyers can appeal. They can go back to court and say, oh, we thought uh, his lordship was uh, high-handed, and they seek, uh, you know, some kind of redress. Number four is that, you know, there are probably lessons mm -hmm. that we can learn from this. And I already alluded to that, yes. that people are trying to control uh, themselves. Number five is that the ESCC says, going forward, Anybody that is reported will be investigated. Anybody that is caught abusing the Naira will be uh, sanctioned. And the relevant portion of the law is Section 21 of the uh, CBN Act of uh, 2007, which is very comprehensive. You know, if somebody meets uh, our delectable, elegant, beautiful <laughs> model, Ojineka, and uh, takes Naira or dollar out of Naira <laughs> and writes a phone number on it, it's guilty. Yeah. You don't use our uh, uh, national oh, currency as a, as a card to give to Ojineka. No. If so you are reporting on this table, Ayo, what is going on? No, there? Ayo, <laughs> no, if anybody tries it, you report the person. Yeah, you know, no worry. or you stamp on the Naira. <laughs> it's a whole range. Yes. Even the selling, hawking of the Naira is a criminal offense. Yes. So we would like to see the ESCC yes. being proactive, arresting people, even at party venues. Yeah. You know, who are hawking the Naira or are using the Naira as a complimentary cards. Okay. Yeah. And then well, finally, uh, Governor Bago. I, I think that uh, video was uh, in 2023, shortly after he won the election. Mm -hmm. But that does not exonerate. exonerate However, yes. he enjoys immunity under Section 318 of the uh, 1999 Constitution. So he's protected yeah. by uh, the principle of uh, uh, immunity. But don't go and copy him. I'm going to do it. Oh, you'll be arrested. You'll be arrested. Well, let's see what the EFCC comes up with now, because, I mean, obviously they have said that going forward, they are going to arrest these people caught in this crime. We'll take another story. The Yoruba Nation Self-Determination Group, led by historian Professor Banji Akintoye and Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Igboho, over the weekend, condemned the group Ominira Yoruba, led by Modukwe Onitiri Abiola, whose members and supporters allegedly invaded the Yoyo State Government House. On Saturday, April 13, security officials arrested 16 gunmen suspected to be members of the group for invading the state government secretariat in Ogodi Ibadan. The gunmen, who were dressed in military camouflage, reportedly engaged security officers in a gun duel. Sunday Boho and Professor Akintoye in a statement said that they are not associated with the Omini Yoruba group because their agenda is totally different from the real Yoruba nation campaign. Well, here is a now viral video showing the self-proclaimed president of the Yoruba nation, Modukwa Onitiri Abiola, declaring their secession from Nigeria. Ike Komo, Ike Democratic Republic of the Yoruba is a new nation, newest nation in the world, number 55 in Africa. Our indigenous people, Mokiwa, Piaku Rire, Ojoni, Nitori Olon Shanufua, as a declaration, Nijo Sunday, November 20, 2022. As a reclamation, Nijo Sunday, December 18, 2022. Pelat Lenyo Long, Pelano Long, Belu Jekon Long, as a proclamation, Nye Ni Friday, April 12, 2024. Pelat Lenyo Long, Otiwasi Mushel, Ijoba de Letibere. Amy Modu going to Abiola, more proclaim sovereignty, Democratic Republic of the Yoruba, Nieni, Ojo Jimo, Ojo Kejila, Oshu Kenry, 2024. Omo Yoruba, indigenous Yoruba descent, Nimi, Omo Yoruba Nimi, Opolo, Gwenke Wabiola Nimi, Omo Nitire Eko Nimi.
All right, this woman here, apparently I think she lives abroad because I'm sure she would have been picked up by now. But before I come to you, following Iran's unprecedented use of hundreds of drones and missiles to directly target Israel on Saturday night and Sunday morning in retaliatory attacks, elicited reactions from across the world, Biafran agitator Simon Ekpa, in a now viral tweet, declared that the Biafra government is ready to help Israel with 15,000 well-trained ground forces, if need be, and will also offer maximum protection to Israelis in Nigeria within four hours of notice. <laughs> Israel's drone attack was the single largest drone attack ever carried out by any country and it was the first time Iran directly attacked Israel after almost half a century of being arch enemies. All right, uh, you know, I, I wanted to play that video of the drone attacks, but yeah, over to you uh, on both stories. I mean, we see uh, the Biafran agitator there saying that he can 15,000, I mean, I don't know where he's going to get those from. But in the meantime... Is uh, it from Finland? He's going to, go <laughs> he's going to, be, uh, he's going to protect them. 15 from in, Finland? From Finland, I okay, believe so. Yeah. Mobilize them in he's going to mobilize and, and get them from there. I mean, this is okay. not a joke, really. But obviously, yeah, right. we can see these people, I mean, agitating for secession and speaking as if they actually control the world. Go ahead. So a couple of things. I'll make a couple of points. Number one point is, we need to get to a point in this country where we tell ourselves the truth. That all of this agitation for secession, everybody can go mad. Yeah. But we must be able to rein people in. So I think the Nigerian government should start looking to the UK authorities to be able to rein this woman in. Because we cannot allow this to continue. We might think it's a joke, but it's a joke taken too far. The second point is, I do not know, and that's why people need to be careful when they start movements like this because they become other splinter groups. And that's exactly what's happening to IPOB today now. So you have seen this group that is different from the Sunday Bowo group. And they are saying, oh, they are going gong hall. They want to take over. And they have a Yoruba nation. So we should be careful because all of this just goes on and on. And it brings up this spiral reaction of destruction. That woman should be picked up for treason. You cannot go out there, disturb public peace and do what you have done. It is not done. Uh, I think Sunday Bo and uh, Chief Akitoye have said they've got nothing to do yes, with it. They've I'm a professor. professor yeah, they've disassociated Akitoye. themselves. Have disassociated the, um, themselves yeah, with the group. But also, it is incumbent. And going back to the point you made, Dr. Abati, today when we're talking to Chief Bodijod, it is incumbent to remind them that it is because of their agitation and the things they say that has given Philip to people like this. So they should be careful what they say. Mm. They should be careful what they say. And this idea of everybody saying, oh, we want to leave the union because we don't feel content. I think it's a jaded idea we should stop already. We've been doing this in the 60s. Isaac Adakaburo said the same. In fact, he even carried weapon against the state. Enough of all of this. Even the North who have said they, have, they talked about Arabah in the 60s. Enough of all of this. It's how we can collectively make this country work. And I'm sure Sondi Ogbo will now, wherever he is, will now see that we should be careful when we make these agitations. I knew he made those agitations on the basis of what was happening to the full and the, uh, the, how some of the you know, people were killing uh, the, 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 the headsmen. The headsmen were killing the farmers in the Oyo area. But please, you can see the effect of this now. Just like when Nandi Kanu was saying his, you can see how Splinter Group have taken over. Most importantly, I think the failure of the state too. Yes, we've talked about that. How did the state not know? But I'm sorry. The Nigeria state collectively has constantly abdicated its responsibility. If you're talking about intelligence not knowing this will happen, do you want me to count how many times intelligence has failed in the Northeast as regards knowing when they even kidnap students? Do you want me to count how many times how banditry has become a trade now? Kidnapping has become a trade, but intelligence keeps failing every time. So it is a, as a result of the collective failure of the country and the security agencies. But when you go back to the Constitution, it talks about in Section 14 of Section 2, that the security of the citizens should be the sole responsibility of the government. I mean, that's why we surrender our sovereignty. Yeah. 
So I think it's an introspective moment. We must be serious. And for the man that says he wants to... I, I'm not sure I'd like to dignify that with a response as no. regards to I'd 50, like your 000. comment on um, Umar Bago, the Niger Umar State Bago. governor. Yes. So as you, I've heard what everybody has said as regards that, but I don't think we're being fair in the country. Yeah. If EFCC is really serious, they should start by all the politicians that does Naira flunking. Dr. Bati, you were still in some parties over a couple of three or four weeks and Naira was flunked. Uh, I didn't spray. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you spray. Because I have no access to it. I didn't say you spray. I'm looking for a night out. I didn't say you spray. I'm looking for my witness. People, people, people put her in my mouth. What I will say, this, this table will break. <laughs> people, people, <laughs> people <laughs> urge you, Ayo, you have gone to parties where you see these key political yeah. stakeholders. Yeah. Our money is being sprayed. I'm not shouting mm -hmm. February 7th, please. For, no, no, it's not the case of, no, that law has been there for no, February 7th. Has, I don't, I don't like, it's part of the CBN. So, EFCC put in, and I'm forward. sorry, with due respect, that secular EFCC release yeah, yes, was a grand way of saying nothing, mm. as far as we're concerned. So, if EFCC is really ready, I double dare EFCC. All to right. go and start with all the politicians that spray in parties. They should send their representatives to every Honestly, top O and B yeah, that right. is in Lagos if, if and other parts. If Governor Bago is covered by Section 318, no, Dr. he's Dr. covered. Dr. Bati, Dr. Bati, Dr. Bati, I'm not talking about Bago. Mm. We've right. said Bago has immunity. There are many top politicians in this country that don't have immunity. Mm. That they are spraying money. We'll still spray money in party next week. Mm. I say I double dare EFCC to go there if, and right. prosecute them. All right. If EFCC well, all right. is looking to raise funds yeah. this Saturday, just station just your men. Station your men. Go. I double dare you. You have a citizen action. Charged. Charged. Right. You people took a arrest. Yeah, you have a citizen action. No, don't start with the arrest. Dr. Abati. Dr. Abati, don't start with the arrest. I say again. Party right. where you have Shall top former head of state story. and all of that, all right, all right, and they spray right. money. Okay. I double dare you to go right. there yeah, and make it under scene. the police act. Let's take our there is also story. citizen action. All right. uh, now, what people are doing, they will put a bow. You will put money inside the bow. All right. Okay. So, okay. Let's take our that, final story, Dr. Abati. All right. We'll take our final story. <laughs> Well, controversial on Asia-based pastor Chukwu Emeka Honamere, also known as Odumeje, released a much-anticipated song titled. People suspected to be Yoruba Nation agitators on Saturday stormed the Oyo State Secretariat in an attempt to take over the House of Assembly complex. The agitators stormed the Secretariat with some of them dressed in military uniform. Reports say they engaged in a shootout with members of Western Nigeria Security Network, also known as Amotekon, and the police before they were eventually overpowered. The agitators had earlier taken over the assembly complex premises and hoisted their flag before the arrival of backup security personnel. The police and Amoteko officials later put the situation under control. I just tell this clam. Um, His Excellency Governor Shei Makinde is on top of the situation. Um, what I think happened is that uh, some miscreants, probably on cheap drugs, had um, seized the opportunity of a um, function uh, being held at the House of Chiefs um, to come here as probably the part of the people holding the function, only for them um, to turn out to be. Uh, to find that they are hoodlums in um, camouflage. And when they are challenged, they also challenge the security people. Um, thank God there is an overwhelming presence. Uh, agency taking place in Nigeria now. State. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the morning show. Thank you very much. Always my pleasure. Well, morning, uh, Chief. Uh, the law is very clear on uh, treason. Uh, the criminal code is very clear in that regard. Uh, the uh, constitution is also very clear in section two. that Nigeria is uh, indivisible and indissoluble. And yet we have uh, some people uh, coming forward saying they want to dissolve uh, the Nigerian uh, nation. In New York State Secretariat, they tried to take over uh, the government led by a certain uh, Mrs. Uh, Abiola uh, or Miss Abiola or Nitiri, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the name is. So what do you think? Uh, do you think that uh, the objective of Yorubas 
should be secession from Nigeria. Even uh, Sunday Bo has said no. Uh, Professor Banja Kintoy has said no. That in fact, these people are not known to them that they are hoodlums. But there are some people who say, well, they are secessionists. Uh, where is this coming from? As a Yoruba uh, statesman. Now, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Ruben. Uh, I wish our nation well. You know, when uh, one of my political uh, sons in uh, Oyo State sent the clip to me, I thought he was uh, in Hollywood. But when I now listened to the comments made by the, the lady who was all dressed in white and talking, I knew something terribly had gone amiss. You know, I, I see it as part of the teaching of civics and history in schools. You just don't go arrange for people to take arms against your government. It is treason. And the way they, they were even lucky that uh, they called the Amoteco first before the police arrived. If it had been people from my old, old profession, they would have seen them as enemies and they would have fired at them. I, I, I was completely very angry. Because that is not the way you talk. It's your government. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. The lady too who was talking, she says she's Mrs. Abiola and Donitiri. These are resounding, well-known names in the western part of this country. So what could have driven them to that level? You are not in the country. You are telling them that you are declaring the kingdom of Yoruba or something. I thought it was like a joke. <laughs> it's a bad dream. Naturally, yes, the attorney general of the federation is from Oyo State. The, uh, the president of uh, Nigeria today is also from the Southwest. So what on the globe would have driven them to that? My conclusion is that pff, maybe they are not that educated. But when you listen to them, and I know the Unitary family very well. One, I think uh, the second son of the former politician, Papa, was my classmate in secondary school. I know their family very well. So listening to that and hearing what she's saying, ha, ah, kadan kadao, suru, suru, suru. You don't take up arms against your nation. Let her now come back home. Because these guys that have been arrested, they are going to be treated like, uh, <laughs> well, we pray for them. Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's uh, unimaginable. I said, what? You, go, you brought guns? They were there with charms? They were, are they dreaming? Oh. It's unacceptable. It's the highest brick in of the law of the land. You can talk, you have that freedom of speech, you can express your opinion, and we have been doing that. That's the most sensible way to approach this problem. Everybody, including me, I know as a matter of fact that the constitution we are running is not working. It's more like a, a, a defined uh, uh, paperwork for a military organization. Why should everybody head to Abuja every month to collect their 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 their, their lajis? It's not working. What has the president got to do with my local government here, or with the local government in Sokoto, or the local government in uh, Bayasa? No, nothing. Politics is local, and we want to see that the restructuring, everybody's been talking about it, is what 
the path we should take. But to start taking arms and now shooting people, it's, 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 it's a modern day uh, Robin Hood. It's, it's, it's insanity. Mm. And I, I want to plead with everybody. Um, well, the investigation will go on. They must get to the end of it. What surprised me is the fact that this thing didn't leak to our intelligence department of, the, of, of this nation. They went, they carried their weapons, they were there in military uniform, nobody stopped them on the road. And you see the urgent need now for state police. Because you couldn't have, they couldn't have been meeting somewhere, no matter where, if we are well organized, like the state police, the SSS, they would have picked that and then come to terms and prevent it. But now they have carried it. They've gone beyond that. I don't know where they are going to be uh, arraigned, but for real, it is treasonable. Mm. And the consequences for treasonable offenses is very damning. Mm. No, for, for, Very damn. for treason. And, uh, what's it? For treason. The, death, mm. uh, the criminal ah, court says treason? death. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is treason. For treasonable felony yeah. under sections 37 to 41 yeah. of the criminal code, the law it's, says life yeah. imprisonment. Yeah. Huh? All right. Chief um, ah. Bredejo, thank you, you so much. Thank you for, your, um, for just stating and opening yes. up the conversation this morning. And a number of things you highlighted, which I'd like to... Right. Um, investigate or probe further. The first thing is that this speaks to a bigger concern like mm. you highlighted on security. And I was going to ask you, your, uh, being having served in, um, in, in that space before, that how could this have happened where mm. a group of people would be emboldened enough to wear uniform and approach the government secretariat in a state and were able to make that get to that point where they got to before they were accosted by local, uh, by the Amoteko, and then the police, uh, where the army the police got involved. It is mind boggling because at what point should they have been stopped or could they have been stopped? Does it mean that any group of people who had access to things can just decide to walk into the secretariat and, decide, and, and make at least some form of headway before being apprehended? That's one. The second thing I, I wanted to ask is dry. What they've termed it, according to Mrs. Modukwe Onitiri Abiola, who in that video self-proclaimed herself as a widow of um, Chief M.K. Abiola and talked about the fact that they had been given authority by God to set up the Yoruba nation. What, what antecedents has she had? Has she had conversations with anyone? I mean, Dr. Lati had mentioned Chief Sunday Bo, Professor Kintoye have denied and just said they are not in that camp. What, which kind of formation or where did this formation come from? Were there any conversations heard? Were there whispers at all amongst the Yoruba community or community of elder statesmen like yourself? Mm. Th thank you very much for your expose. You know, um, what happened is a confirmation that we are, you know, in terms of policing, in, stand, in, in terms of intelligence gathering, the personnel so far is a shortage. What is the total population of the Nigerian police? What is the total population of uh, the intelligence department at the national and at the states? Every political discussion is local. The need to establish very urgently state police, this is, this is it. Because the state police will be people drawn from the area. They know the culture. They know the norms. They know the do's and don'ts in the area. And information gathering would be much faster. You can see how on the globe, with all the, the uh, weapons they collected, where did they get them from? Look at the number of cutlasses in their vehicles. Where did they come from? But now...
All right. Uh, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. And God, I will bless you now. Yes, I'm going to post out a link right now. I really want us to talk about this whole thing. This is the time now. Tinubu has been put to test. <laughs> hey, God. And I'll tell you guys how Tinubu has been put to test. Yes, Tinubu has been put to test. You know, uh, let me post out a link. A link I've posted. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. For those of you that want to join us, please start coming in, um, you know, and let's talk about all this together. You know, although I still have about two minutes video to play, uh, but I'll play that one shortly. You see, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I've been put to test. You know why? Now, this one uh, are Yoruba agitators, right? Uh -huh. Now they go do all this the way they do so. And now everybody is calling that they should be arrested because this is a treasonable offense. In fact, that particular woman that were reading, uh, uh, holding a press conference alone, declaring and all that, people have called for arrest. Now, this is the time we are going to know if maybe Tinubu leaving Nabdi Kano in prison is deliberate or not. Yes, Bola Ahmed Tinubu have been put to test. So we are waiting. If we want to sweep this one into carpet, we go still know. Eh, this is the <laughs> because I don't know that English where they speak for you all the time. Nepotism, hey, favoritism. Then more come add this one, Jenna. Ethnicism. All of them will have a way to play part on this. Tinubu have been put to test. Yes. Let's see how many people that we arrest for treasonable offense now. Because now the county is still in prison, right? Even though we've said in the past, oh, uh, Shawore have been allowed to go, uh, Sunday Bowo have been allowed to go. But let's see what they are going, what the federal government are going to do about this. If you, a Yoruba man, but they judge, they talk and now say it's a treasonable offense. A Rufai from Arise, Tokam. Many people have they have called for the arrest of that woman and everyone that played part on that satanic movement. But we are waiting. It's more than 48 hours now. We are still waiting for this to happen. What do I know? But all I know that the president of Nigeria have been put to test. Let's take it from here. You know. Um, Je, Je, Je in case you are not aware, we don't insult anybody here. Yes, we don't insult anybody here. Uh, we'll give you a chance. You're not going to be removed. You know, you don't say people talk nonsense on this platform. In case of next time, please, we like everybody to join us. We want us to work together, to talk together, to 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 have a better nation in our time, a better country that our forefathers could not achieve in their own time. I want you and I and us all to join here together to have it in our time. Yes, if you are if you are saying that or oh, your something happened in your state, why are we calling on the president? Yeah, he's the president of the nation. Yes, he have the right to 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 take decision on this. He have the right. Yes, even though or your state government wants to try to sweep this under the carpet, the president of the nation have the right to take decision over this. That's why we are calling him. He's supposed to be the father of the nation. Or oh, you're not aware of that. In case you're not aware of that, then I don't know why you're here. But I don't want us to lose you, though. I just want you to control yourself. We are not here to defend anybody. And we are not here to castigate anybody either. With the state of our country right now, if we are calling on anybody, the first person we should be calling is the president of the country. I'm not interested if it's something if the thing happened in my local government area. I'm not interested. The first person I will call is the president. Yes, if you call president name, you drag the name so many times, then you go summon the governor of the state or the local government's chairman. So don't tell me how to call the president of Nigeria. I will call him how I like. So it's the last one for you. Thank you. 
I'd like us to move on right now. Thank you very much, uh, my wonderful people. Please help us to press on that like button and let's do this together. Uh, Ikena, I see you on the backstage, please. Turn on your camera. Let me see some the person that is behind Ikena before we accept you to the screen. Sorry, it's the rules of the platform. We need to follow it. Thank you very much, everyone that just coming in right now. Mike Akionbari, thanks for joining us. Ike Ju, thank you. Patience Demo dear, thank you very much. And many others right there. I'd like to quickly acknowledge those of you that supported the channel. Uh, Jack Obedient, thank you very much for doing it again. God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Madam Bella Naomi, for always being there. God bless you, ma. I appreciate you. CXL, thank you very much. And Jack Obedient, once more. I appreciate every one of you, my wonderful people. And God, God bless you now. Yeah, Ikena, we are still waiting for you to turn on your camera. Once you've done that, then I'll let you in. Let's quickly listen to this short video. Then we'll take it from here. People of God, I decided to, you understand, take this video out here because it's in the fire. I don't mind me. Okay, so what's in this up now with this airpiece matter? Do you understand? Why, why, why don't we like our own? Why don't we support our own? I have been flying airpiece for years and the service has been good. It's been fantastic. We're not saying I support our own because it is our own. Even if they're not good, just support them now. Mm -mm. They are good. Which all of those of you that have used their service will testify that they are good. Airpiece is good. It is world class, international standard. Every business they get hooked up once every once in a while, even international, all these international airlines and everything. What do they talk? Airpiece has been excellent. They will not even talk whether how patriotic they have even been and everything. But as a business, let's even talk about, let's not put sentiment. As a business, airpiece has been good. All those that have used airpiece will testify. I am testifying that airpiece has been good. So if airpiece is now struggling to fly, fly the international route and Nigerians are still thinking, should we, should we not? Ah, something is wrong with us. Oh. Something is wrong. Have they used our brain to collect power? All these airlines, international airlines that are now pulling down their tire, pulling down their airfare and everything, it is just to sabotage airpiece. It is just to sabotage airpiece. By the time where they don't knock airpiece out of the picture now, they will bring those prices back, even increase it. It has happened before, now not be today. So why are we behaving like people that don't have brain, don't have sense? Why is it that if something does not come from abroad, we won't appreciate or celebrate it? Why don't we like our own thing? It has happened several times. All this, Most of the biggest corporations in Nigeria right now are owned by foreigners. Is it because we do not have industrialists in Nigeria? No, the system frustrates, frustrates them. The system frustrates them. We Nigerians frustrate them because we prefer to patronize foreign brands. We prefer to patronize foreign brands. Like see them swear for us. If it's not imported, we know we're not going to appreciate them. What problem do you have with their peace? No, tell me now. What issues have their peace ever had that any international, any other international airline has not had? Tell me. At least would they fly all of them so we know. So what did they talk? What did they talk? Let us as a people decide that we want to accept, appreciate, and celebrate our own. Air peace is our own. Forget all this nonsense. I read some idiotic comments made by senseless people. Senseless people. Best probably whenever I even fly before for a whole life. Writing and just because he has one stupid phone and not much data. Just a right nonsense. Do you understand? Let us celebrate our own. Air peace is good. And we know, say, for this country, anything where governments they run, you know, they last. It is only things that are run by individuals that, that thrive better in this country. We know now.
It is only things that are run by individuals that, that thrive better in this country. We know now, I'll be waiting to hear Nigeria or whatever, many names they don't give Nigeria and here, what up, where is it today? Now, one individual is now doing it and doing it well, and we are not happy, we are not celebrating it. Wait, then, then swear for us. What's all this tribalism nonsense? Because what, what, what's my business if, if he's an able man? It's a Nigerian, he's a Nigerian, and as long as we're still one entity and it's Nigeria, I, I will support him. If my BB man starts in one tomorrow and he's good, I will support him. If my Gala man starts in one tomorrow and he's good, I will support him. If he's a house man that starts in tomorrow and he's good, I will support him. It's not about who, where is, where is my business, where it comes from? Is it giving value for, for, for the service I mean, that I'm paying for? That's all I'm concerned about. Am I paying premium and getting premium in return? That's all I'm concerned about. And Air Peace has been trying. So let us support air peace, especially on the international route. Let us support air peace. Forget all those airlines where they bring down price. It is all a strategy to frustrate and to sabotage air peace. I say it with my full chest and a half. I say it with my full chest and a half. It is all a strategy to sabotage air peace. This is not a paid advert. I've never sat in a meeting with air peace to air peace to promote or whatever. I'm talking from my own personal experience as a passenger on their service several times. Fly air peace. Fly air peace. Now we get on our own and it is good. It is working. It is competing well with the international counterpart. So what's your problem? Fly air peace. Stop all this stupid nonsense narrative. They divide us against ourselves. This is what they've been doing since, since independence. Even post-independence. Divide and rule. Let us come together and say, this is our own, we're going to support it, we're going to be using it. Uh -uh. And let us see if they two will not come to their senses and be bringing that, using, giving us good tariffs and, and, and better service. Let there be competition in, in this space now. I don't know what our government is doing to support the Our government should be solidly behind the peace. I'm not criticizing the government because I don't know anything about it. But our government should be, should be supporting air peace fully because it is our own. So if the government have not... I don't know. Like I said, I'm not saying the government have no word, but if they have not, then let us do it. At least we will they use their service. We, uh, we are the people, and we have a voice. Fly air peace. Fly air peace. Because watch this next video. Esther was. Ah, I'm happy. To be honest, you know why I'm happy? I'm happy that I'm hearing this from a Yoruba man. For those of you that doesn't know the man I was talking, that is Chief Femi Branch. It's a chief now, you know. So for some of us, they think they call him chief, that chief, that chief now, you know. So he's an actor. He's also a producer in the Nollywood industry. So uh, he's famously known in Yoruba movies as well. Yeah, that is uh, Chief Femi Branch. Now he can talk and so. And I'm happy hearing this from a Yoruba man. I don't know what we want for Nigeria for continue to allow these politicians to separate you and I. Mm, I don't know. I don't I don't talk, 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 tired. So when I see people talking like this, I'm always applauding them. Now God will bless you, God Femi. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming out to speak the truth to power. Although I know a lot of people are, will, will criticize you. All those tribalistic bigots that will criticize you for doing this. But I want you to know it's between you and God. Say the truth. Just say the truth at all times. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you. That is all that we have for you guys today in terms of video. But I only have just two or three articles, which I'm not going to take time here to present so that we can start talking straight away. But the big one is this one. We'll be calling for this man to be arrested for so long. As you can see right there, APC suspend Abdullahi Ganduji for alleged bribery. 5.6 billion naira state treasury loot. I see for them. This will not be the same way they squeeze dollar for inside inside Agba that year. Now you know. So I'm not going to read anything there. So I'm just going to uh, rely on the on on the headline. That one is coming from Post Gazette. In case you want to read more, please go there and read all of them. We don't have time anymore. But Aero Five does chalk also. That's Aero Five. They fight in the government already. You know, so look, we listen to what the RFI talk for here. Because RFI say federal government has spent trillions of naira on subsidies since inception. Hmm. But 
Tinubu said subsidy is gone on the first day, right? That was on the 29th of May last year. Subsidy is gone. So Erufa is saying now that they have spent trillions on, of Naira on this. And not going to be like, uh, God, you're not at the top. It's coming to pass, oh. especially if we want to go to that dollar area. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes some of us won't believe what the federal government they do, but when this kind of thing comes, they happen now. We'll call it say, ah, what did they happen? We don't understand. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I would like to quickly take uh, the last one. This lady for years, so. So that same lady will go Jamaica, go do one party one time, we spend $150,000. I don't know, now, now ask and they ask, you know. DSS arrest every five political associate, Aisha Galadima. Galadima. No, be that same woman be this. I don't know. I want me somebody. To be honest, I'm asking a realistic question here. I don't just know, but I want to know. It's not her. It's not her. This is a different Aisha. Okay, good. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. That's what I'm asking. I'm not for this platform. No, you're the carry the past information. I wanted to be sure. Now, the department, the department, I don't go read this one. No need. I don't need that. Since, since not a person, we will know like that. So more you'll live and make it go. You know, but still, she's arrested. You know, so like I said, uh, that is all we have for you guys today. We only have just two articles and all I'll be taking. Okay, yes, I still have one. No vessel. Now, today I'll be talking. I don't say one. They want to come here right now. Quick give. Let me give this one. It's the last one. Then I'll take some calls. Then we'll move on. Tinubu appointees from Northern Nigeria must defend administration of leave office Matawale. Let me talk this one. The Minister of State for Defense, Mr. Bo Bello Mohamed Matawale, has called on the peoples appointed by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu into the administration from the north to stand up and defend the government from what he called intimidation and mis representation of the efforts and achievements. <laughs> oh, these people, they can, they can prioritize rubbish. Anyway, let's go. Don't come use English to confuse the gullible ones. And the, the one with, no, with the force may not go to school. The one with the weaponized illiteracy on. Then you go to the sink, they go, what a, what a world. Uh, what a country. But why? Anyway, I'd like us to move on, my people. That's all I have for you guys today. So I'd like to take the first call. So if you want to call in, please call in. I know say since yesterday I all the fine. Now you want honor because we came out late yesterday, you know. So yes, all right. I would like to quickly. Okay, let me take calls first before I pass this announcement. Mr. Tony, thanks for calling in, sir. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Please uh, talk to us. I, I, I salute everybody. So uh, let us start with uh, this. Uh, but police care that wouldn't be in him. So what him you know who call advice and to tell them say he be man, you know, they forgive us 14 years. <laughs> See, you know. <laughs> eh, who could they tell her? Who could they advise and say say you be man who actually na, na man prison they say they put him on my prison. No. Yes, why you don't say be woman, huh? Now 14 years, they forgot for prison, you know, your car go to underground. They will give him a uh, Uganda treatment. Hmm. You know, Museveni. <laughs> So that is it, sir, for that one. Then for the air piece, you know, it's a pity that, uh, you know, we keep saying that uh, the vested interest, you know, whatever we are covering for one Nigeria, whatever, we say that uh, there are vested interests. We all know that, that uh, the European Union or the England, uh, the world dictated to us, like the Obama and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then, uh, I, 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 so, so what is wrong in having, you know, a fellow black man? That is, uh, you know, instead of waiting for the, you know, the so-called hungry Ethiopians to be maltreating us, you know, Ethiopia that were then of Kosoko when I was growing up as a little kid, eh? they are talking of, uh, the, you know, the, we are the world, we are the world, that is the famous uh, uh, music, mm. eh? 1985, where they say that uh, we are the world, where you see people with flyers and everything, even Pastor John was still helping Ethiopia eh? when he was a president, you know, but to the point that uh, Nigeria that we call it rely on, to the point that Ethiopia has to even come and take some billions of uh, dollars from us that, uh, that they want to give us. I mean, I mean, this is very, very bad what is happening in our country, sir. You know? Then, uh, then the other topic is uh, 
you know, the other topic, please. Uh, can you remind me of the second topic after the, the Yoruban nation that is that that, that break into uh, the House of uh, Assembly? Uh, 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 you know, I don't cook now with you. Uh, so thank you very much. Sir. You have one minute you left. One minute. Yeah, you see, uh, thank you, sir. You see the, all this Satan has again. You know, when I would told say that uh, so many percent are uh, uh we don't understand. Uh, I would say you understand me now. Why are we trying to be politically correct? Well, we know exactly what is going on. That the country is not working. That in the northern Nigeria, that uh, at least about 50 local government areas are being controlled by those bandits. And the government is not going to those villages to storm the villages. And then uh, but our people that are tired of uh, or, or be that are being afraid of probably they may soon get to or your state, get to a third stage. We have to take action. I'm not uh, saying we should go by violence, okay? So the two they are doing, so they did the right thing, and then uh, I support them, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, they can't, we can't go wait like that until they come and deal with us like that. That's why so my time is up, you know. Thank you, sir. You know? Thank you. Oh, oh. Of Thank, course. Thank you, so sir. So they did the right thing. Okay? All right. So all those uh, people when they come and analyze, they, they analyze nonsense. Like a okay. you know, like a woman last time, they you know they you see they send this program to our villages there. Today, they are sickly of people, but in the north, how many officers have been murdered in the northern Nigeria where the government is not going to evade them? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tony. Thank you, sir. Let me take another call quickly. Love God is my strength. Thanks for calling in, man. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yeah, I mean, this one, they talk away, so because I don't understand this, my phone. I'm going to correct No, you are good. Go ahead, man. Thank All you. Right. Okay, okay. Now, uh, good evening, everyone, on the comment section. The panelists, good evening to one of wonderful panelists. I can always enjoy listening to you guys. God and our ladies, God bless you. And uh, happy Monday to um, a great mommy, mommy dance for a good thing to one. You know, uh, this thing is, uh, is, I'm just laughing. You see, now we are going to see what Tulumbu is going to do. This is a test of his loyalty to the Nigeria constitution because if the Kano can be arrested for treason, even this war they have done more than in the Kano, for them to put on a common flag of Nigeria police and went to the extent of what they did, having gone in their hand, that is a treasonable offense and is punishable. And I know what you find on the tree, which I don't want to say. Now, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Abiola Nitiri, she's in uh, London. She's giving order to other people, children, to go into the government, uh, um, government uh, uh, environment and put Odudua flag to fly there. She has gone too far. And a lot of them now that have they contributed the money are very, very short and in big trouble. I just spoke to a brother now. He's very popular on the road. Nation. He's my friend. And he said he's not among them. I was even panicking. I said, go have your party coming. So the money she took, I've seen that she wanted to buy a truck that they will use to face the Nigeria government all. Oh, now they are asking to come and arrest her. I don't think those people should face that punishment alone. I think she should be, she should be also taken so that she can see the warrant of the government. I'm waiting to see what Tulumbu will do. Whether Tulumbu will put this in order the carpet or not. And for Mr. Samuel Ekpa, speaking that he wants to help the Israelite government, to give them drones to use their war against Iraq, Iran. <laughs> oh my God, God help us. I don't know what is happening. Yes, everybody, we are not happy. But there's a limit to go against a government of a country. It is very, very bad and gone too far. I know I've only got three minutes and I'm very sure I will come back. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me take another call quickly. Um, thank you very much, guys. Help us to press on that like button. Help us to share as well. Okay, nobody is calling in. Okay, Shimizia, I'm returning your calls if you are there. Quickly. 
or you'll be calling in since. Okay, is you are not picking. Thank you, sir. Thanks for calling in. Good evening, to you, sir. Please talk to us. I greet you, sir. I greet everybody. Good evening, good afternoon. Thank um, you, sir. I hope you, got, um, you have um, uh, um, a nice uh, relax, uh, rest yesterday. Yes, sir, I did. Because come back and see talking like someone they, they, someone <laughs> they hold uh, on his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, so yeah. I wanted us to talk about it, but people didn't join yesterday, so I needed to. Although I was okay, also this tired. Your program, this your program you're going now. I think you're gonna. I think I think you might revisit this uh, topic back to on Sunday. I don't know, like if someone starts on saying it, and I know it's not. It's not right here on your on the caption on the uh, it's something you put the program today. But uh, please, you need to bring it back. Okay. So, and uh, well, I will say a little bit there, though. So, um, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, uh, this, uh, the people, see, there's one thing in Nigeria sometimes, if I look this country, I say, where are we going? You will see a real woman who will be following Bobriski. You will see them. You know, this, this, this issue of uh, Bobriski, it's our, our women. Let me tell you, it's our women that are encouraging Bob, Bob Risky what, what he's doing. Because if Bob Risky come out and they judge him, I say, come on, he can't, you're a man. I, I think he will, be, he will be full of shame of himself of what he's, he's doing. But rather than that, they are clapping for him, you know, hey, you are, you, you are the best. You, you wear the best clothes. Come on, what are we teaching? This is not our culture. It's not our culture. Being, crossing, dressing, or whatever, um, doing transgender. It's never our culture. What, okay, the people that are coming up, what are you trying to teach them? You know? All this thing that you see, all this thing that you see that ESCC did do to him, you see, they punish him, let me tell you, in their mind. They punish him to why uh, in a two place say you you they won't see, they won't come out and say it but they use this naira something and punish him punish him that's how that the way it is so for me women women that clapping for for him they should stop they should stop we have a lot of women out there hey, even the even the one that they don't know whether they're going to marry we have a lot of them in Nigeria. Thousands of millions of them. Then okay. the man just come up and uh, he don't he, he, he don't want to take the put himself as a man. He want to become a woman. Thank you. Then, you see us uh, this Yoruba uh, issue now. Let me tell you, our people. You see some of our people. They believe that if you have you go and have a little charm, you say, Oh, I have arrived. I have a little, I will use this one. Uh, uh, this one is the. Um, uh, 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 I don't know how to, which power they use. This way you can't put yourself online because of you believe on charm, you believe on one voodoo, you went somewhere like that, you believe, you believe on that, that they're going to save you. That's what happened to them. They have, they have one that is 100% sure that they're going to, uh, they're going to execute what they want to do. All right. Because of they have the charm, the, the charm they have. Thank you, Niger Watch. Bye. Thank and you, please, sir. Remember, don't forget that by the program yesterday. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that topic yesterday was a wonderful one, but I don't see you now yesterday. Now, 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 I can't give me another job. Now, I could more redo and begin. Eh? My diaspora now they support and I say more redo and begin. It's not your easy like that, though. I wanted to talk about it yesterday properly. Although I was tired, but I was willing to leave the platform so that I will be listening from behind. Well, it's okay. Let's move on, on today. So I'll come back to you guys again, my callers. Please let me go to the panel. We don't have lots of people on the panel today. It's Monday. We have over 628 people watching us, you know, across. So where are our people? More people watching, but few people on the panel. But meanwhile, let me start with the first person on the panel today. 
we have powerful people on the panel, on the panel anyway, uh, uh, powerful voices. Although Mona not goes from there and time about you, because for this platform now, eh, if they have me before I praise somebody, because whenever I praise one, now nah, nah, attack, now nah, the next day I don't receive WhatsApp audio, WhatsApp message, attack. Why some people will carry mind, come the broke, come the panel, come the talk. You prioritize some more than us, you know. Come on, in every in every area of life, they, they see who they do where pass. But for here, me they try to see make I carry everybody along. When I know they allow me make I make I make I give people their credit I be, because now attack now go get. Eh? Everybody they try fine, and even for here. So me they learn from some people. Eh? I know they lie. You know, nobody can be on top, number one, and all that. Tomorrow, somebody will still pass you. That's one thing about life. I beg, when I not come for me, oh, I don't talk, I don't talk about Nobody should come for me. <laughs> you know, anyway, let me go on. Mr. Ike, it's good to have you on the show, sir. Good evening to you. I beg, talk to us, sir. Good evening, my brother. I really appreciate this opportunity. I'm sorry I couldn't make it yesterday. I saw the topic after the program. I said, wow. I had a lot. I had a lot yesterday. I call Black Panther. I call, call, call. I call uh, <laughs> Madam Lou. I call uh, uh, Madam Rita. No more for now. Answer me. I say, hi. I beg. We go, we go, we go buy you coffee. Make you bring and come. And the next day, we go bring and we go buy you enough coffee. Make you use guest friends. Don't mind no that. You don't eat wall. You don't eat wall. You don't eat wall. <laughs> Why did they do this one? Why did they do you? Because I don't find you. You know how many times I call your name last night? You don't eat wall. Now wall, you, you don't go enjoy. Come back. You say, call Black Panther. Call this. You say, call, call, call. You champagne where you drink for that place you give me. If I guess them is that if you know you drink alcohol. Now what for you? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I bet Mr. Ike, Mr. Ike, please mm -hmm. hold on, sir. hold on, hold on. I need to hold. There's an announcement. Let me just pass this announcement quickly. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my people, uh, when I know say last Friday, right? It was Friday? Was it Friday? Uh, but yeah, it was Friday. Yeah, Friday on the twelfth. We're supposed to have a uh, a governorship candidate on this platform. Uh, one thing happened. You know, turn up which uh, I understand, that is fine. But now we have a governorship candidate coming to Nigeria again. So the reason why they carry everybody along, we say, if they fail, that will not be my problem. But this one now, you know, uh, on Wednesday, you know, which is just uh, on the 17th, but at 9 p.m., 9 go put on, 9 p.m. on Wednesday, so uh the governorship candidate from one of the three but tomorrow i'll reveal the person's name no worry but today i'm not revealing tomorrow i'll reveal it because we need to post out a poster uh you know to let everybody know that is his request you know so we need to publicize it but i won't say it today you know uh, because i'm waiting for one or two things that i asked them to send to me so one they forward i don't know whether they already sent that and i can never check my whatsapp but once they forwarded it, then we, we publicize it tomorrow. So uh, on Wednesday, uh, 17th of April, 9 p.m. night talk. So the beautiful thing about it is that, you know, uh, we can quickly start our broadcast on time, you know, then and uh, take it from there. Thank you very much, my people. I thought I should bring this in. Uh, Olga, I beg go ahead, sir. Oh, okay, my brother. Um, the topics you brought up today, first of all, Ganguja, if you remember last week, I said, uh, I don't know what Nigeria is waiting for. Investigation is difficult when you don't have any evidence. But this is an ironclad evidence. This person took the camera in there. After many times, this man have done this, and they don't have any way of holding him. You know, and you know, these politicians are so smart, they will never allow you to do any bank transfer to them. And they will not allow you to bring Naira because Naira will be too bulky for them to take. So they will ask you to change the money into 
dollars or euro or pounds so that it will be compact for them to take. And this man collected this whole money and the video was shown. The man that got the video was highly punished and was forced to go and apologize to the governor. Um, the APC rewarded him with second term and made him governor for the second time, although um, that's a different topic, the rule that happened for them to make him make him the governor because he lost it and they, and they said the, the election was inconclusive. And in one week when they repeated that election, they did the abracadabra and this guy became a governor again and did four years, four years with that pen hanging on his neck. And after that, APC still found him worthy to make him chairman of the party. He followed Tinubu for campaigns, going up and down with Tinubu. And that alone was supposed to affect the candidacy of uh, Tinubu. But he went along with him. And after that, they rewarded him by giving him the chairman of the party. And this is what we see in a country that we want to move forward. Now, I will be very happy, not just suspending him, but prosecuting him and letting him bring back this money. This money belongs to the people. You don't see a contract of one million and you say it's 10 million because they will return the nine million to you. That's, that's, that's treason. That's treason. This treason, treason, treason people are talking about is not just when you carry gun. Uh, against the nation because this is economic sabotage there are so many people that would have died if uh, the, the people that would have died because the money that would have used to save their life had gone into private pockets so i expect the judiciary to sit up and prosecute this matter and let it be a deterrent to other politicians and and and, and leaders that have decided to turn the, the common patrimony to their personal uh, uh, inheritance. This has to be dealt with, with all that it deserves. That's where I want to leave that one. Then, I want to talk about this, uh, the agitation by the Yoruba group. You see, um, most times when you have a genuine cause, you'll find some refrains that will go to now destroy that your genuine cause, and that thing also is happening to IPOB. You know, you might have an organization that have genuine reason for bringing people together. It might not necessarily be to break away from the nation, but it might be a pressure group that brings to the fore or let people realize what their people are going through. Now, these people went and boggled that real agitation. The agitation, as I see it, is not necessarily to cut away from Nigeria. But if there are very known anomalies or injustice going on, you could have a group to always talk about it. You could have a peaceful protest and so on. Now, if you have followed this woman that says she is Abiola's wife, I have asked some of my Yoruba friends and so on, and they say the woman is not Abiola's wife, but one of the ladies that had a baby or had babies for Abiola wouldn't know. But she's using that name, Abiola. She's asking, answering Abiola's wife. She's been in the U.S. here, you know, collecting money. They've been collecting money, saying that they want to bring about Yoruba uh, uh, government. They want to break away from Nigeria. They don't want to be Nigeria. Now, there was a time they put up a poll that people can sign in their signatures. Say, sign signature. I want to raise two million signatures, uh, signatures, you know, to let people know that they really have so many people behind them. And then that thing opened up. People started signing. It got to a time. They decided to take it out the counter. They took the counter away from, from, from the nets online. 
because when you sign in you will see the number mr elvis just like you do poll here and the moment you vote you see the percentage and so on if that was what it was then but maybe they realized that they weren't going to get enough signatures they took it offline they took it offline and say oh that the nigerian government is after them so that they don't want to leave it online and after some time they came out to say they have gotten two million votes two million signatures and i know that that wasn't true they didn't get it but because of that now some people donated money people donated money towards that cause so she will be under pressure so much if she doesn't do anything that's why she brought those people together and, and say they should go to or your state government government uh, secretariat to go and put up uh, a, a Yoruba flag. And then she was making her own announcement from the US here uh, as if she's now the president. They've even shared positions, so they promised people you will be the prime minister, you'll be the president, you'll be this, you'll be that. And people have been giving money. And what it has done now is for those that have genuine interest about the Yoruba people will be treated the same way these people will be we are treated now that's what will happen look at how they were described they said they took some cheap drugs they wore camouflage and carried charms how how would they have achieved anything now they have criminalized they have demonized all other people that have genuine agitation Agitation, like I said before, not necessarily to break away, but to bring to the fore, to bring to the center your 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 people's your people's the injustices that are meted to your people. So that's why we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful on who we follow or the groups that we follow. And then make sure that our aims and objectives are strictly followed. If you don't, if you don't you will you will have some other miscreants go to spoil those agitation that are genuine now we talked about i was the one one time i was speaking here and i told you about this voodoo economy and you can see that the thing is flying everywhere when they say oh dollar is coming down dollar is coming down it was almost like you you were giving an arithmetic question and then you bring the answer and they say show all working and then you are not ready to do it you say i beg the end justifies the means because everywhere in the world nobody can strengthen their currency without you seeing what they have done to strengthen it so many people are now coming on air today i was one man i was listening yesterday he said nigeria cannot continue to take our foreign reserve Take our foreign reserve to subsidize the dollar so that by the time it will be one year in office on may 29th they will now be clapping everywhere that they have brought dollar to 800 naira or on this thing after that what happens people take their foreign reserve to support production and start strengthening their their, their currency our people are not doing anything they are using foreign reserve to subsidize the naira they're subsidizing the naira and trying to uh, uh, for, for them to look good we can have told us that by may before may 29 that he would have finished the vice president's house he would have delivered the vice president's house what will that do to our economy what the money that that is being used to do that project can build health centers in about 10 states but they're using it to be the house for one man Oshiba Joe never slept under the bridge but he's using this humongous amount to deliver before May 29th you will see it May 29th when they will read their, their achievements they will tell you they brought the dollar down now hear it from Aerofi when we said it here when Mr Jonathan has been screaming it here that that there is still a subsidy going on. People thought people thought he just hates the government. Now it's coming from one of their leaders. The president is spending 
more than times two what Buhari was spending monthly on subsidy. And people are buying fuel more than 600 naira per liter. So if you are spending times two, more than times two to subsidize oil, how come people are buying the, 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 the fuel more than 300% more than what they, were buy, what they were buying before? So you find out that people are spending more to buy fuel and government is still subsidizing. Can this government give us how much they have saved from subsidy removal if they say they remove the subsidy? Nothing. Nothing. So I don't know how a government can run by propaganda. You cannot. If if anybody forgives you doing that during campaign, camp, uh, camp, uh, when during your campaign, nobody, nobody will ever sustain propaganda in leading the people. We are almost one year, and they are still in campaign mode. They are still using propaganda. They are still sending people to talk on their behalf, to 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 fill up the the the, the airwaves with the people they paid. So that's not that's not a government that is driving us towards our destination. Like Peter said, he said, I might not be able to achieve everything I promised, but you will see me putting 100% effort. If we see this government putting 100% effort, we will really, really, really not blame them if they don't achieve everything they said. But there is no effort at all. There is no effort at all. The president went to Lagos for Salah. Even after hosting the different groups in Asu Rock, breaking fast. Why is it that the governors and most of the legislators have to still fly to Lagos again to go greet him? What kind of psychophancy is going on? And money is being spent hosting these people. The vice president, uh, senate president, all of them still flew to Lagos to go and greet Mr. President. These are all waste of money. Each time they travel, you need to know how much they spend in traveling. And who is suffering it? It's only the poor masses that are asked to, to tighten their belt. There is no more waste to, to tie this belt. Though. This belt is almost cutting the waste of everybody. There is no more waste to, to, to tie this belt. So as we, as we talk, when we have opportunity also of uh, having pressure groups that are really, really having aims and objectives that are positive, that are realistic, that are responsible, let's also join to make sure that this government starts serving the people, not ruining the people. Thank you, my brother. Naja, watch. Naja, watch. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much, Mr. I. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thanks for so much. Naja, uh, watch. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to beg for beg Mr. Jonathan. Can I go ahead before him? Because I want I'd like to enter a meeting now. Okay, uh, uh, Black Panther, how are you doing today? Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Nigeria Watch. I want to thank everybody that has spoken with members of the panel that have come in here today. And I believe some of us are still on their way they will come because we are almost entering uh almost entering the second quarter of the year so i guess a lot of activities are going on in a lot of workplace so we're waiting for them they will come in and i want to thank uh, mommy in diaspora god continue to bless you ma thank you for your consistency I, like i told you the other time i said i'm learning from you and uh, i want to thank those who are viewers out there and those commenters may god bless you all and more grace to your elbow. Thank you for good service for your to your to, to our Nigeria. Uh, I want to say something here. When I heard this uh top this uh breaking news that APC suspend Gaduje alleged bribery of 5.6 billion in the treasury loot, I, I, I almost laughed, I almost fell down when I was laughing. Somebody was asking, Why am I laughing? I say, ah, is this thing I'm this this our country, like the country Nigeria, has become a, a laughing stock. They think everybody can forget. Everybody can just forget. 
and they will just bring something to say, let us give it to the gullible Nigerians. They don't, they don't, they don't remember that it's not all Nigerians that can forget. And there's Nigerians that critically analyze issues. Immediately you bring anything, I mean, this government bring anything out, we'll go back to our archive and start, go back to where we research, then we'll start researching again and link two situations together and, you know, we'll get what they are, we'll get the grievance they are doing. Nigerians out there, to all Nigerians out there, remember, this government came into power through the back door. Remember, this government took the power of the people and trash it and said, let's see what you people can do, go to court. Remember what they did? They masterminded the court proceeding and there was no judgment on all the evidence that was brought to Supreme Court. There was no judgment. Remember again that Nandi Kanu was taken illegally from Kenya, supported by the Kenya government. Though they say they did not do it, they supported it. And also remember the agitations of the uh, Oduduwa report. Uh, 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 group. They freed the head of the people that were agitating. I want all of us to pre take our mind back. Keep it somewhere. I want to. I want to. I want to put everything together now. And Nigeria was. You remember? I, I told you something that this APC. They planted a very strong cell all around the network and those strong cells have been backed up financially what None of us will see, when i say say group 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 okay, factions okay. to monitor everything and to prefer so this are a group of people that sit down as a panel to give the government how are they going to get the legitimacy Remember, we we're saying here, most especially you, Nigeria Watch, you were saying that you arrest the past government and all the ministers that have taken money from the treasury illegally. And we were always shouting, let him show us that he's, that he is in charge. Let him paint it to us that he has the government, let him bring out, let us see how it's going to work it out. And we all know that they are looking for one thing, the confidence of the Nigerians. And look at how the dollar went through. They are doing the dollar is going down, which is a, a what, the banana republic set of economy that they are adopting. And here in our means, they said that uh, oil, 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 uh, something is canceled. And one of our technocrats here said, oh yeah, the subsidy is still on. It's even more than what Buari did. Everybody say, no, no, no. Thank God. Heru Fire has brought it out. And that to show you that we are really digging into the fires and bringing out facts, critically analyzing the Nigerian states as, a, as an entity, as an oligarch. Put that in your mind. They are oligarch. Put that in your mind. Now, what are they doing now? After they've sat down, the cells have sat down, they say, who are they going to make? They need a top person in the government, in the apart itself, that they can use. Let me tell every one of you, Gadu, they hold a very strong position. It's one of the leaders of the Arewa. Gadu, is one of the top leader. If he cough, something will come to go happen. If he cough, something will happen. That you they remove the Emir and Emir, he remove him from as uh, CBN governor. He removed him. That has never happened before. He solely removed him because he was not functioning the way he was supposed to be functioning. It was against the government. He removed him authoritatively. 
nothing shake. Nobody cough. Now, who are they going to use? The head of the government, Buari, they cannot touch, it's untouchable. Then Gaduji comes in. Look, when we are taking that they should arrest Gaduji, even on when they made him the chairman, the presidential committee that will bring up the next president in APC. After the election, six months, then we were shouting, nothing happened. They should take the top man, Buhari. They refused. They now brought Gaduji as a small screen to us. Remember, the lady, the minister that took billions of Naira into his to a private account up to now as we are talking nothing is done and you brought a top oligarch top machinery he said oh god is suspended allegedly bribery five point nothing nothing they will do this what is happening now they are trying to use gaduje to get legitimacy to show to the nigeria the gullible nigeria Oh, Tinubu is doing something. Because what you are seeing today is going to be one of the achievements, like one of our panel said. It's going to be one of the achievements they are going to do that. They are working energy tiredly fighting against what? Corruption. And remember, the looted money of uh, Abacha was relooted, which they traced the account back to, to so many countries. Now, it's on, it's on the net. They are tracing the account now back it was relooted so i beg every nigerians what you are seeing is just a small screen gaduja is one of the top arewa leader and no if that guy cough nothing they happen if that guy cough for yeah the the the, the arewa place with a shake so what i'm trying to say is that we should monitor all these things a small screen they are trying to buy legitimacy they are trying to 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 use somebody's name like gaduje to make it so high for us to do what for us to say oh yes it's working so that the media rat cell that they put around this is a, this is something they can all use to to perpetrate and give out to the public that yes our leader is working and Gaduje has been caught. The, the, what we are shouting about, he has done it. Therefore, let us see the next chapter the president is doing. That means president, we will not believe in him that is working. This is all what they are doing is a small screen. Because nobody, nobody, I repeat, the only man that has been arrested from the north, not even the north, the middle bed, the only governor that went to jail was I think it was the governor of uh, 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 Jaws, Abi, one of the middle bed governor that went to jail. And after play, he play, play two, play two, he went to jail. After Buhari came, Buhari released him. And what? And 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 uh, what they do? They 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 now said they now erased that part out of his um, 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 record. They now that presidential pardon. They now gave him presidential pardon. So this is our all small screen. Nobody should believe this, so because we have not heard, we are going to hear more names coming out, some sub name coming out, but they are not going to take any money from any Gaduje. Gaduje is 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 a one for bad job in Nigeria. These are the kingmaker in Arewa. The man that can remove an Emir, a very top Emir. He removed him. Nobody shake. Everybody close my pump. Entire not close my pump. Even the, the he banned the, the Emir from not from from entering to that caliphate. He even banned him from entering to that caliphate. That's to show you how that is the man called Gaduji. Tinubu cannot touch him. I bet with anybody, Tinubu cannot touch him. All these things is scrub, small screen. Let me come to the uh, Yoruba agitation. That is another small screen. They are playing a game which they played against the IPOB, which they are, they are going to repeat again. But this is coming in another dimension, but it's the same pattern. I said Nigerian politicians, they will never change. Look, for them to make the mouth of the agitator from the Southwest to close, to shop and grab them by their balls. Sorry for my war. 
They have to gather some people and let them do what they did so that they cannot do what there will be a presidential spokesperson that will say a word like what they say against um, iPod. They put I say, Oh, iPod is what is a terrorist group. Bam, that was all. They see it, and the military went into the east, and that was all. That place is covered. Bam, the iPod leader they will not release him again. Bam, that was covered to catch the west and put them in their hand to do them the way that they now close. How do, will they close the west now? Let us put some people. That will commit treason. It's just a small screen. That will commit treason and will now lock that side. They will still make a pronouncement on this same group too. Because that has shut that all they did has shut down everything about agitation from the West. Like I told you guys, if we announce our our potentials, if we gather our strength and ask. For the, for the convocation of a new constitution and a new electoral law, these people will shake. Because there is no way they are cell that as they gathered around the old network, they can talk against that because we have a reason. Because what they have done now, it, they are even making it more bold that Nigeria is not a nation. That some people are still agitating for a nation inside the nation. That means the constitution is the problem. They are even giving us more strength than the constitution because this is what they are doing now. It's a game to shut that group, never to rise anymore during my administration and any other APC administration. That is the game they are playing. The Nigerian politicians will never learn any lesson until one day the nigerians will arise and it's not going to be from west alone or from north alone it's going to be a a a, a, a tornado from every part of the country because they've succeeded in making the nigerian citizen poor 75 percent 80 percent of nigerians are on below poverty level even the ones at the middle they have not joined the one below so what they are doing is a small screen all of us should just go back to our archive and go back to how they operated and how they shut down ipop this is the same pattern and they are going to catch one they are going to bring one person as their new leader and they're going to put that one in and start going through what court proceeding upon proceeding upon proceeding to make it in such a way that they will never release Kanu and they'll put this one to balance issue. And they'll still go on to the north and do the same thing again to balance the whole issue so that people will not be talking that, oh, it's only the West that is talking. It has not done anything in the north. These are the program, these are the machineries that they don't. And mind you, this, this our president is not a baby. -o. This is a man that has a lot of dynamics, illegal dynamics in his brain to maneuver things. Remember, he had a drug case in America. Remember, he didn't appear. Remember, he said they should go ahead, told his wife to go ahead to take everything in his account. Remember, every, remember what it is. He forged certificates. Remember, I said he went to a school in Nigeria, but the school did not recognize him. When they wanted to do a program for me, what happened? The school now suspended that program. Remember, this same body judge said something about him that he knew him. That let him tell us who his father is and where, which village and which house he came from. Those questions have never been answered. So if there is nothing. This thing people will do that will not be well, he will not back it up with criminality or illegality. I, I said that there is nothing people will do that he will not back it up with its con mentality, illegality, corruption. There's nothing. I want to ask what good will come out of Egypt. There's nothing good that will come out of Egypt. Because we know where they are coming from and we know where they are going to. Now, 
Look at um, Alex Oyema. What right, what goals will other nations have to now make sure that they, they blow out Alex Oyema, a local carrier from, a, from Nigeria, they blow it up and make him, make him gone? What, what audacity? If the government is not backing those external forces, if they know that the government is backing Oyema, they will never come up with anything. Rather, they will go according to how it's been played in the, in the, in the aviation industry. Know what they are doing like this. This is a gang up. This is a clandestine movement that we need to find out the root where this thing is coming from. And this thing is coming from Asorok. Because if Asorok rise up today, that they are going to back Oyema, how can you put one leg with Oyema and the other leg outside? And you expect, and you expect something good to come out of it? The government should go in with the full leg and make a fundamental statement to the entire world that this is our local and if you do anything against him we are going to do the same thing against you let the president make a fundamental statement concerning the aviation industry what is happening today then we know where he stands because he's the one representing nigeria when he speaks other nations will list him and every other people that have perpetrated evil will go back to their shell this thing that is happening is getting a kickback because there's no illegality that will come out of it, this government that he doesn't know about because he's the master of it all. He has been holding Lagos State for more than 25 years or 20 years and about, and nothing Lagos State is still grabbing with, with, with his knee, begging to, to, to survive. So I beseech every one of you not to fall to this trap this trap that they are doing, let us go back to their archive and tell me that what I've spoken is wrong. Please, everybody go back to your archive and see where they have been coming from so that we know what they are doing because I am still going deeper. I will come back with more findings of what they are doing. But remember, they planted their cell around the, 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 the web, the entire press, the entire place, they planted it there. So they meet once in a while to give the government what they are finding so that as the government pull it out, they will have what to say to the people. Like this, Gaduje APC suspended, alleged bribery of five point something billion naira. This is something that they will go out there, go into different channels to tell you that, oh, this is the man you have painted black, but it's after his own people. This one is a lie. L-I-E, L-I-E, -E, lie. That is what they are doing. So Nigerians, I thank you. I will not fall to this trap. And I beseech every patriot to not fall to this trap. Let them arrest him. Let them call and jail him between, within 16, 60 days. Let them announce that you is jail for life imprisonment. Let them say it. If they can, if they are the force to do that, then I will believe them. For this, Black I will never believe them. Because their records are in my path. I know what they are, the way they operate. I know the way but this government operates. So let everybody just okay. keep calm. Let us be agitating for a new constitution. Let's be agitating for a new electoral reform. If we get that, we have our power in our hand to take them out. And we will no longer yeah. sit in our home to say, let's go to court. We ain't going to no court. We fall into the street and take our back right. We're not going to hear anybody again go to court. If we want to go in for the election, we need to make sure that the electoral law is done well and the constitution will get it so that the judiciary will no longer pronounce who our president that we elect be. Rather, they will try to tell the elect body to go back and rectify the problem so that the people can have the power to bring in their own president, which they voted for. Thank you, Mr. Nigerian and God bless you. Black Pata, before you go, let me ask you a question. You think Tinubu will allow Oju Bole Gamduje to be sentenced to life imprisonment? And Black Pata, can you hear me? Black Pata, you're not responding. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes, 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 I, I can, can hear you. you. I can hear you. How come Black Panther not responding anymore? <laughs> mm, maybe, 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 maybe don't go to the meeting now.
Yeah. Yeah, because he's, call, he's calling for... I can hear you now. And why were you not responding? Because you are saying that Ganduje should be sentenced to life. You think Tinubu's regime can sentence someone like Ganduje to life imprisonment? You think Tinubu's regime can What's happening? Black Pata, you're not... Okay, I think you have a network problem. We are waiting. That is just a rhetoric from me. I'm waiting. My brother, you will wait for so long. Tinubu will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Until they say so take him to court and jail him for corruption, then we know what my, is going on. My brother, you go home and continue your dream, I beg. Go home and continue your dream. If you don't dream finish, come back and let us know. Tinubu's administration will put Ganduje for life imprisonment. How is that going to be possible? But meanwhile, that is why I said Thank what you are doing is a lie now, just a game. Don't you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. That cemented it all. You know, Tinubu will never do that. But nevertheless, I appreciate every one of you right there. Thank you so much. I'd like to appreciate uh, Arabella Naomi. Thank you very much for the support. Again, I appreciate you, man. May God bless you always for all you do. Thank you guys for just coming in right now. I can see more people right there. Michael Oganemaro in the building. Uh, and Adela Jaokumbi, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Talk about all I can see you just in. God bless you all. Press on that like button. Uh, Nena Bona, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I God bless you now. Okay, let's come to Mr. Jonathan. Mr. Jonathan Kisley, it's good to have you on the show, sir. I called you yesterday, Taya. Make you join, ah, you join us. And I was, yeah. I waited, and I waited for the broadcast till around 7 7 30 British time before I gave up okay. because you said you will come back one hour late. But uh, you know, I'm not saying one hour, I say I, I will be late. Ah, okay, I'll be late. Anyway, That's what I said. Yeah. Yes, then I, Even when I now, uh, then I came in later when you are closing. Oh, okay. Why yeah, you not come yeah. hold me? Why you not yeah, when, me? Yeah, when, when you are close, I say, if I go in now, Mr. Elvis, it's time for you because, in fact, you are begging, you wanted to close, you know. No, you I'm gonna leave the broadcast for you. Others would have joined you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If yeah. maybe you come that time, I'll just leave the broadcast for you. Only you will talk, then you see other people will join you. <laughs> I'll go, to, I'll go to bed. Amen. Thank you, sir. It's good Amen. to have you on the show. Right, right. Talk to us. Let's Amen, talk Mr. about Elvis. the state of the nation. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Thanks to all the panelists and those that are in the comment section, those that are listening, watching. I greet everyone. Welcome. Uh, you know, it's all for me, it's all bad news. There's only one good news. And I will start with that good news. It's only one. Everything today. In fact, today is a fun fundamental day. Today is a serious day. But, you know, in news, sometimes we don't know. The ones that are not so serious, we take them so serious, we put all our energy into it. And it is, today is a very serious day. The news presented today, the news that came out today, are very, very serious and fundamental that will have consequential effects. On Nigeria, but I will start with the good one, the good, the good news, which is uh, the video from uh, Femi Branch. That's the good news. Fly earpiece, just fly earpiece, Nigerians. Let's fly our own. See, the moment this all these foreign airlines, it, I think the, the moment they, they they you know they stop this game, and they realizes that. It is not business as usual. The better for them. Otherwise, their business will collapse. Their businesses will fail. And I don't. I don't care the, the the how much money or financial strength that they have. There is a limit. There is a limit to how far they can play this game. Do they want to be calling their flight for free? Or they want to be saying Lagos, London is ten is ten pound or ten dollar or fifty dollar that it will not affect their bottom line. So the earlier they stop this game, the better. And I don't, I couldn't have said it better than Black Panther. The Nigerian government must come out clearly. You know, as I always say, Nigerian government and officials they are always vague. They will not come out clean. Mister Jonathan. 
You are yes. not you are not applauding this government to dollar now and nine hundred and eighty naira. I'm coming here. Yeah. Mr. RBC. Mr. RBC. Now I'm continue to remind you when they do good, <laughs> oh, they appreciate them. Oh. Yeah. Eh? These okay. people are trying, you know. Whether yeah. whether the whether whether the price of bread has gone back to five hundred naira. That's what I care no, no, about. No, 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 no. The price See. of bread is still two thousand naira. Uh -huh. Now, whether whether <laughs> the, whether the whether the people that are unemployed in January today they have jobs, that's what I care about. Whether those people that are, the electricity in Nigeria is now regular and reliable, at least say forty percent in difference, that's what I care about. You see. So it's not a what the, the the price or the, the the bill that people pay for their electricity is it going down or is it going up? That's all I care about because see, they are taking they are robbing Peter to pay Paul. They are taking from the people for this dollar game that they are playing. That's just what people don't know. You know, a lot of people in Nigeria are just so. You know, I won't say that My we brother, don't I said it in Miami, or dollar they come down and everything is still expensive. I don't understand because, that. Because because it is it is the it is you as some people will call it, they will say it's, now banana republic economy is the yeah, they will say it's voodoo, yeah, voodoo economy. That's that's what it is. It doesn't add up, but it is also it's not complicated, it's not difficult to comprehend or to understand. Even in a layman's at a layman's level, it's not at all. If you are buying, if you are buying your your petrol, as they said, they brought it down to six hundred or six fifty. Even if you are buying it at six hundred naira, right, and the dollar is still at one thousand, it still does not add up. That simple thing that I don't know how people just don't get it. The dollar is one thousand today or nine hundred today. Your petrol, you are buying it at six hundred. How could that be? Even when dollar was one five one six one seven, it is still the same argument today. The dollar must come to six hundred naira or five hundred naira, four fifty, before you will now say yes, it makes sense. But now it doesn't make any sense. It simply means that somebody is paying under the table for you to still be able to get that petrol for six hundred naira. It's as simple as that. I, I don't know because if the person that is bringing the 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 PMS to Nigeria, he gets his he gets his dollar for nine hundred naira, and then he comes back and sell it for you for six hundred. Is he a, is he for that Christmas or or is printing dollar or money somewhere else? He's not in business to make money. So we know, in fact, the money they are paying. On subsidy is even double what Buari paid. Let them be covering up because that's what they master in Nigeria. They know how to cover up. But again, you remember, I will just end that part with this. We all remember when Buari was printing money and some people were shouting and shouting. They didn't listen to them. Nobody listened to them. But when Buari is now gone, it now became clear. Now, you know, people are now asking for the head of Buari. But why Buari was there, nothing happened. The same thing is happening now. People are shouting now. You are paying subsidy. You are paying subsidy. It is criminal. You don't sub you are not supposed to be paying subsidy again. You are still paying. Are not people are not talking. When it is all said and done, when it is over, they will now say the National Assembly will now come and say a, a, a crime has been committed. They will be looking for another MA failure that they will rope, that they will rope in. See. This is all game, and we all know what is going on. So, I will uh, I will leave it at that. It's just that the good news that I started with, Mr. Elvis, you didn't let me round up on that good note. See, it is hashtag. I bet, tell us, I bet. It is hashtag fly here peace, Nigerians. Fly here peace. Let them do all the yes, so yes, so yes, so. It is hashtag flag. Let let British hear ways and Emirates and hear Morocco and hear Egypt. Let them bring their price down to all they want. We care less. We feel... Even some of this, maybe most Nigerians, maybe people don't fly. If, if, if people that fly a lot, most of these foreign airlines, they mess up too. They mess up too. I fly all of them. They mess up too. 
you will fly, you will, they have horrible customer services in so many instances. How many do we want to start saying? How many? They have horrible customer services too. Whereas this same earpiece, earpiece as a is as as is is the customer service is, is top notch, especially in flight when you are inside the flight. So fly, fly your piece, fly your own. If they let them do whatever they want to do, fly your piece to a point where, in fact, your piece will be will be going to that intro. They will be flying it through two uh, got with two times a day, one in the morning, one in the night, because it will be so much. Fly air peace. Let them play all the game they want to play. That's that's just the good side of it, and I'm glad that at least. People are pushing it out. But you see, with respect to this um, this lady, this uh, Bob, um, uh, this Yoruba declaration, let me start with this Yoruba declaration that they did, Yoruba nation, whatever they call themselves, and Samuel Ekpa, I will just lump them together. I will put the two together. Samuel Ekpa saying that he's going to support Israel with, I don't know the number of troops that he mentioned. He said it's going with 15,000 troops that he will support Israel. And this woman too uh, sat down in the comfort of his home somewhere in London and declaring Yoruba nation. You see, these two, they are clowns. They are clowns, they are deceptive, and they are, the, in fact, they are most unwise. You know, some people, Mr. Jonathan, yes. sorry to interject you. Don't yeah. you think they are all working for some yeah. one section of government? Yeah, that is that they have their pay, they have their paymaster. They have they have their paymaster. We all know we can connect it, we can connect it all together because what they are doing, it does not, it does not, it does not make sense. How someone Epa we gather 15,000 troops, 15,000 trained. And supply them to Israel. Are you kidding me? Do you think Israel is the Nigerian army? Do you want to compare Israel military? Please. Do, where do you want to start from? Where these people are clowns. They are being they are, they are filling up their pockets at the expense of the of the gullible people. They are attention seekers. And they are so unwise because what you are doing is that you are just you are damaging you are damaging the people that you are supposed to be that you are you you are claiming to be fighting for to be supporting you are damaging them the further you are making things untenable for them much more complicated for them i don't know where this woman now this only three woman now somewhere in london how you will come and defend these people I say they are clowns. They showed up in a state assembly with cutlasses and machete and some and some some guns. What do you call them? Not AK-47. Not even you know some all those local guns and with machete. They they gone. They, <laughs> 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 people, people are, they are dumb. Now, now government plan work. So if they are serious, they, with my, I saw, I, if, I, if you can't be machete, maybe somebody gave them $100, $100. Go and go to the market and buy like 1,000 machete. I started seeing machete. They are dropping. Uh -huh. Is it machete you want to go and take, you want to use to take over the government? <laughs> These people are, that's why I said they are clowns. This is when you look at it, yes, you will think as a, as a chief, but they just say, you will first of all think that maybe it's, it's, it's Nollywood. That you are watching some Nollywood somewhere or some some you know that's what you will think you are watching you will, you will think you will not think this is real you want to take over the government and you are going there with machete how this woman will now leave London to come and to come and to come and defend these people and how much legal expenses that is she is ready to cover on their behalf with her own money and her own resources how she laid down there in UK. 
bringing brought people's lives to danger. And now those people now, I must say, as sad as it is, it is over for them in Nigeria, of Nigeria of today. It is over. We will not hear of them again. That is their best. The best they will get is that we will not hear from them again. If you don't hear from them again, then you know or they will do their paparazzi court appearances. But as far as these people are concerned, it's all over for them. You will see the Nigerian government the way they will land do this. You will know whether they are real. It will, it will come very clear in the coming days. Mr. And Jonathan. Then, yes. What they have done now, they have locked down the West from agitation. That's it. As you can see, it, it, as you can see, uh, uh, Igbowo and uh, Professor Akitoye quickly coming out to dissociate themselves completely. You see, yes, they have locked. They are, that, that's a, 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 effectively that's what they have successfully done. So people will now be, you know, people will now be weary. But you know what? Nigeria is playing on a. It is that country, that country, Nigeria, the reason why I said today is a very, very fundamental day, a big lesson to be learned. See, that country is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. I have never used this, this, this statement before. I know people use it a lot, but I have never. But today, it is clear that Nigeria as a country is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. See, this is my, as a Nigerian, as a Nigerian that wants the best for my country. I want to come out and be proud of my country. Anywhere I am, any, any part of the world. I want to use this time to advise the Nigerian government that they should better sit up and stop all this rubbish, greedy lip service at which they are handling the Nigerian security and the, and, the, and the Nigerian defense. They should stop it and be serious. I am pleading. They should stop it. They should be serious about this issue of insecurity. They should take it on. Please don't play politics with it. Don't play politics with it at all. Don't put the lives of over 200 million people because of sheer politics, because of what we are going to get. What happened over the weekend in Israel is a testament. We saw a nation that was bombarded with over, over 300 plus drones, crews and Bye. ballistic Ballistic. 500 and 560. Yeah, in total now, of crews and ballistic missiles, 99% of them failed because of what? <laughs> the state of Israel is serious. They, 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 they deflected, they attacked them on the air. They, all those, all those ballistic, I'm talking of ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. The kind of damage they will have done by today, the world will have been. We will be talking of different things by now. If 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 ten, if only ten of those ballistic missiles landed on their target, we will be talking of different things today. How much of defense does the state of Nigeria has? That's why I said the country is sitting on a state on a, on, a, on a keg of gunpowder. And that is what we're saying all along. The, the, the defense now is more of technology. Iran did not put any man on the ground, nothing. This was pure technology that they deployed. But because the state of Israel was firm to defend their own, this damage did not happen. And as I was watching it, I was looking, I was just Nigeria. I hope and I pray that it will not degenerate to this level in Nigeria because that's why I said the country is sitting on a state of on a keg of gunpowder. Our government should get serious with this insecurity issue. <laughs> Please, I'm begging boss, you guys. Man. One, 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 Stop one this. No, no, no. You know, you know. I, I, Where's your excuse today? I, I slept. I was Stop. tired because I didn't invent. I didn't invent from the other my Please. other job. So I did a lot of. Yeah. 
paperwork and count. So, please, I'm begging this government of Nigeria, please take this seriously. Let's get serious. Don't play with Nigeria. Don't with this because of this insecurity that has been politicized to a point where the, 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 the intelligence, what happened over the weekend, how is it that the intelligence will not even know? The intelligence community will not even have a glimpse, an idea of what is about to happen until they descended on the state, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the state assembly. If it, if they were serious and they are more organized and more litter, that's how they would have penetrated. So we'll be talking of different things by now. Rather than for our security, intelligence community, to be serious about this thing, they are pursuing Bob Risky all over the place. It is Bob Risky they are pursuing all over the place. It is the people of Oklahoma that they are oppressing and suppressing. Because if these people, as, as poor as they are, as unlearned as they are, as unready as they are, that they invaded a state assembly, if they were more litter and more organized, that is how they would have done it. The damage would have been done and it would have been a different story. The reason why I said that country is sitting on a stay on, 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 on a on a on a keg of gunpowder. Now it's a different thing whether they have the government have a hand in all this or not. Time will tell. We will know. We will know. See, the same thing still attached to this Gandoje team. This, 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 this Gandoje team. That uh, you know, for me, I just see it as a, as a political, is a personal thing. They are fighting each other. Let I don't don't let us get involved in their fight. I couldn't say it better than uh, Mr. Black Panther. See, there is no need to get to get involved in their fight. This is just a game. This is just a game. It is their game. We are not going to be naive to the point where we will get involved in their messy game. We will not do that. They will not draw Nigerians into their messy game. We know what the law says. See, this is simple and clear. We know what the law says with respect to the allegation against Ganduje, the law is clear. The speed at which they will undo it, the speed, the, the, the speed at which they will prosecute Ganduje will tell us their clear intentions. It will make their intentions known and clear. Whether they, are, whether they meant business, whether they are really serious, or it's just window dressing. Whether they are just window, they are just they are just playing. This is their messy game. Let's see the speed at which they will prosecute him. Whether it will match the speed at which they prosecuted Bob Risky. Whether it will match the, the, the speed at which they prosecuted the, 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 the poor man in those states for stealing food. Mr. Jonathan, yes. sorry for coming. You should know that it's a game now. If they cannot yeah, yeah. catch better Edu, why would yeah. they go for Gaduji? <laughs> That's why I said. Now, yeah, let's wait now. Whether they are serious, we will know. Whether by before the end of this week, Ganduje is already sitting, is you know, his case is concluded, judgment ready to be pronounced. By the end of this week, we will see. So that they will not say, you know, we are just we are we are waiting. We are waiting. But I dare you do, I dare, I dare, I dare the judge that will sentence, that will give Ganduje the appropriate punishment, the appropriate judgment as stipulated by the law. I dare that judge. Let him come out. Let him do it. I'm waiting. I dare you. I think I heard it from the first time of Rufai today. He said, I double dare. I double, in fact, I triple, in fact, I will go for that. I triple dare the judge that will come out and sentence Ganduje according to the law because Ganduje is supposed to spend nothing less than 20 years in, in prison. The speed at which you go after Bob Risky, 
which we know that you are not going after any 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 naira abuse or any defacing of the naira that's not your intention we know what you went for it is absolutely inequality there is nothing like equality before the law in nigeria and they will do things this the statement from efcc they will, they will they try to paint things and window dress and, and pretend as if Nigeria is a normal country. Look at the statement from EFCC, thinking that people's are, Nigerians are fooled because that's what they take Nigerians for. Just look at that statement. Empty. Empty statement. You can't get anything from it. Just trying to romance the people, to deceive the people. It's full of deception. People are out there today. This you, EFCC by today, you should have nothing less than a dozen, a dozen of this case now in court at the minimum. How many of those politicians or how many of those names, big names in Nigeria, you dare go after and prosecute them? They are all out there. When did you get Bobrisky Bob, Bob video and when did you arrest him? What is the timeline? How many days are in it? The, the date that you the, are you telling Nigeria? You think people are fools? Are you telling us now that the Bobrisky video happened in January, or the Bobrisky video happened in February? Of course not. It happened in March. This is April, and you have you have, you have arrested him. You have prosecuted him, prosecuted him. He is now in jail. All within four weeks. All within four weeks. So do you think people are fooled? Let us know. The country, see, it is complete. No, there is nothing like equality before the law. Absolutely nothing. Outright lack of rule of law. That is what is operating in that country. If there is rule of law, if there is equality before the law, EFCC, we have nothing less than, less than nothing less than a dozen cases similar to that of Bobrisky in court today. But they will not do that. They will rather come out with some with some statement to deceive to deceive Nigerians. That's what, that's 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 all they will do. Let's let's wait and see. And for you know, Rufai, uh, um, I know uh, I mean Rufai of of Arise of Arise News, you know. He made, a, he made a comment, you know, with respect to the Nigerian government, you know, I mean, regarding this woman. I want to go back to that. This woman uh, from UK that organized, that proclaimed our own Yoruba nation, not the Yoruba nation that I am, I am part of, that I am born and bred from. No, it is our own, from our own compound. You see? Let's be real. Let's be realistic. Don't let us play the same game that they play in Nigeria, that Nigeria is normal. Nigeria is not a normal country. First of all, I've laid the foundation. I, I, for me, and reasonable Yoruba people completely disassociate themselves from her, at least for myself and for millions of like-minded Yoruba people, dissociate themselves completely from this clown woman and whatever she calls herself. Completely. She's a clown. She doesn't know what she's doing. However, I will add this to it. Don't let us think that Nigeria is a normal country. Nigeria is not a normal country. And don't let them deceive us when they are doing things, pretending as if it's a normal country. It is not. I cannot... So we, we, when, when Rufai of Arise, Arise, Arise News, now ask that the Nigerian government should connect with the UK government to bring, to bring her to Nigeria. What are you talking about? I completely, I, I, don't, I don't want to align with you on that particular statement. I don't. I don't want to at all. Don't, don't romance with the government, Rufai Hosseini. On, you are on point, as far as I'm concerned, on every other aspect of your analysis. But on this part of it, you are trying to romance the government. Don't romance them. Nigeria is not normal. You know. Why? Which government will release anybody to Nigerian government? 
because you will know that there is no rule of law. Let's always bring this government so that if this is what would bring them to account, to, to adjust and to begin to do the right thing, to let the rule of law begin to play, then Nigerians will rise up today. We will even start protesting in London. Get Onitiri to Nigeria. Get Onitiri to Nigeria to go and face the law. Who will do that? When you know that he's coming to a country, even if, even if, I put it there, even if she's doing this on her own without connivance with the government, which, which, which government will release even their own, I said it before, they, are, they can't release their dog or their cats to the Nigerian government for prosecution. Who? So let's say that. So that let let us let please let's be clear. Let the Nigerian government know that there is no rule of law. This is the first thing that must that must be. If there is no rule of law, we don't have a country. That's why we say we don't. Is 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 we we just don't have a country because there is no rule of law. If there is rule of law in Nigeria, then that comment by Rufai then can, can stand. And then you can request and say, okay, please bring this woman to Nigeria because she has committed treas a treasonable offense. Because even if she's guilty and uh, she has to face the law, I mean, she has to face the wrath of the law brought to Nigeria, you think she's going to get a free and fair? free and fair trial in Nigeria, in your own art of art. Do you think so? Of course not. So if this is an opportunity to call the Nigerian government to order, to begin to operate under the rule of law and to, to bring equality before the law, let it be. So my advice again to the Nigerian government is please just do what is right. Do what is right. Bring Nigeria to order. If you have to restructure the country, restructure the country. Start by state policing. Start by introducing state police. It doesn't cost you anything. You can do that. It is just because you want to, you want to hold on to power. You want control. You want to control the country from the far north of Sanfara to the down south of Lagos. You want to hold sway and control everything. That's why. Because that is, as Alex Oyema said in the last week, he said it a lot. It's a piece of cake. Yes, yeah, it's a piece of cake. But state policing is a, is a piece of cake. You can get that done within a twinkle of an eye. Let the state have their own policing down to the local government level. Then we will know how serious you are because we know that every we, we, we know that everything that this government is looking for everything they are looking for is legitimacy is legitimacy and so far they make it worse and worse in the process of looking for that legitimacy both internally and externally they are making things worse and worse and worse every day so Mr. Elvis. Continue now. Yeah, hello. Ah, okay. I was thinking that, okay, Mr. Uh, you, are, you are there with me. You are there with me. I was waiting. I didn't hear Mr. I didn't hear Mr. Elvis at all. So I, I, I my, 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 my prayer to the Nigerian government is that they just do the right thing. Because what we're seeing in Nigeria is not equality before the law. What we're seeing is inequality before the law. It's what is playing out. And we continue to see that day by day in Nigeria. They are, they are, they are really fighting for this. They are fighting seriously. They are fighting and struggling seriously for this legitimacy. They are looking for it as, I mean, they are looking for legitimacy. But guess what? Guess what? Nigeria is not 2015. Nigeria is not 2000 and 2020, uh, 1999, 24, 24, 25 years ago. This is 2024. What you did in, 20, in 1999, 2003, 2007, that you, you, just, you just got away with it. 
you cannot. We will not forget. We will, rem we will always remember how you came to power, how you grab power through the back door. We will always remember how you forge your certificates, Mr. Tinumbu. We will not forget how you truncated the judicial system. We will never forget. We will not forget how the elections, the, the vote of Nigeria were made not to count on February 23rd, 2023. We will never forget how Mahmoud Yakubu in the middle, in the dead of the night, at 4 a.m. in the morning, announced the result of the presidential election. We will never forget that. We will remember. We will not forget the case that was brought against you in, Ch in the state of Illinois, in Chicago, United States where the school you claim to have attended said the certificate you presented did not emanate from them. We will not forget all of that. We will not forget how the school, the secondary school you claim to have attended was not even established. These are all there. They are, they are all there. We will not forget that. So these are too much for you. These are just too much for you that you... to. To, to slide under the table and for Nigerians to just forget. It, can, it cannot be. It cannot be. We will bring this to bear every day. We will bring it to bear every day in Nigeria so that Nigerians will remember. It does not matter what you do. My brother said, no good can come from Egypt. It is not possible. It's not possible. So whatever you do, no matter how you continue to fight this, this illegitimacy, yes, you will fight it at the end of the day and there is no victory on the horizon for you because you literally, you literally in broad daylight grab power. And because of the peace-loving Nigerians, Nigerians just want, majority of Nigerians want peace. Nigerians just want their country to be in peace. They want to live in a peaceful country. That is what you are enjoying. That is why they let you go. That is the reason why it seems as if you know you are in, you are you are in charge. But Nigerians, they are aware. We will not forget. We will not forget, Mr. Tinubu. Mr. Elvis. I want to drop you there. Is anybody there? I can hear you. Okay. Isn't that it's only you and I? Yeah. It's only you and I. What about no, no. Uh, Mr. I did hear our semi-colonel talk the goal. Ah, okay. Okay. No, because we are not we not plenty for you to die. You say more interrupt us. I did hear. Okay. 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 Now let me leave it. Let me let me leave it for Mr. Uh, Black Black Panther. You know, um, yeah. With respect, with respect to Mr. Black Once Panther. Once you guys are done, we can round up. Mr. Black Panther. Black Panther. Okay, Black Panther still the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they run for this see, meeting. Yeah, they, Panther, and they Black, run out. Black, Black Panther, they book around meeting. You know, they say I call somebody boss man here. My person won't call me do that way. They tell me, see, by the time I'm late. Oh, my now. So, you, you see, you see, the, the system itself is, is, is a problem. And until we, until we solve that problem, there's no way forward for us. Until we solve that problem, there's no way forward. No matter what we think, no matter how bright we are, no matter how educated we are, if we don't go to the root cause of the problem and try to solve it, how nations solve their root problem, how they are going to harness their potential, how they are going to stay together to form a formidable force that will bring about the rebirth of a great nation. There is no way forward. We will just be jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. There is no way forward. We just got to do the fundamentals, and the fundamentals, I stand on that ground till we get it. I am not going to weaver, I am not going to get shaking until we get it one if we want to go for another election every members of the constituency that we have in nigeria should go and hold their senator together to talk to their senator that we need to change 
the electoral law and expunge the power given to the INEC to do both to do both way, both analog and digital. Now let them put it permanently that we should go all out digital. No more analog. We should go all out digital. Any place that doesn't have that network should hold its own and they can do the election again. Until we get it right, there's nothing I bad in us trying. We are, not going, we are not going anywhere if they refuse to reform the INEC and the judiciary before 2027. We are not going anywhere. That, that, you, know, you, know, you know, the judiciary is a, is a constitutional stuff. So if we do the judiciary, if we want to do the judiciary, it, take, it more takes um, you going for constitutional review. So that is why yeah, I'm but, even... But, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, but they judge, you know, talk about it today as well. He said the constitution, the, the current constitution that we have is, is totally wrong constitution. It must be changed. So when yeah, he said it. Yeah, yes. he said it now. We know. We have been saying it, but they have been telling us to try, to try, to try, to try. We have been trying, but me, I'm not going to try again. If they don't change it, they will see Everything okay, let me, ask go. You, let me ask you a question, Black Panther. If they refused, because I don't want it to look like I'm the only one on my own lane. If they refuse to change the constitution or reform the INEC in 2027, 2027 what would be your stance? If they refuse to, to change it, the election will be more, more, more volatile and a lot of people will, will lose more lives. So will and you be campaigning for somebody in that? I will not campaign for anybody. Anybody, yeah. Let us. I will sit uh, down. Uh, and watch not, the will you campaign for anybody? I will not campaign for anybody because my I, I will believe strongly as I today my position I don't see it changing that any any politician even going there to participate it's like it's like you are being deceptive in the first place because thank God thank God I'm not alone. You know, you know what you are going to face. And uh, and when you ask them the real question, how are you going to see that the election is free and fair? They will they will, they will deflect and say they are not INEC. It is INEC that will do it. They will. So you just want people to come and waste their time, waste their resources, you know, then vote, and then their votes will be thrown into the trash, into the trash bin by INEC, by hooligans, by the likes of Uluomo in Lagos. And the rest of them in in in, in, in Port Harcourt in, and across cross river uh, river states. So that's what you want people to go. You think people have the Nigerians don't have better things to do with their lives rather than to be making to be giving you people power so that you can get there and steal and make the country dry. So you think people are if, if there is if there is no reform if there is no reform I think we will advocate for boycotts because there's no way you go into a game with somebody that already has the result in his hands and exactly. you can go to anywhere so yes. if, if there is no reform if there is no reform one the the INEC chairman must be must be appointed independent from the president then two it must be made compulsory that the election will be transmitted electronically if these yes. two things are not there compulsory we will not listen to Mahmoud and uh, Okoye. We will not. We, we will just boycott the election. Mm -hmm. Let them go and do it. Because if we go, they will win us. If we not go, they will win us. So maybe mm -hmm. make we not even waste that. Do you know how much mm -hmm. it will be uh, uh, spent in the campaign? Do you know yes. even the places, the the, the, the the most risky places in Nigeria that he, that he went to? What if he had lost his life only for you to come back and somebody has listened to this? They are out. Yeah. Yes, of course. You know? So let me just say one, one more thing about, um, you know, um, last week when we talked about air peace, you know, some people fought and say, no, no, no. In fact, some people say you're talking rubbish and so on. You see, um, there are some times you say, this is not the time to talk, but to, to act. There was one time we were representing one client. I don't want to call the name of the client in Nigeria. And it was uh, a cell phone client. And when they make their power of their headquarters, 
they will send it to us and say, oh, implement, implement. And people were saying, other companies are in computer village trying to know what will Nigeria want. Do you know there was a time they had uh, 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 three SIMs in one phone, two SIMs. And they said, no, 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 they don't want to do double SIM. They don't want to do double SIM. It's just going to be uh, a single SIM. We told them that the Nigerian network is not so reliable. That's why people use two SIMs. And many people don't want to carry two phones. That, that's why they're doing double SIM. By the time they realized it, every other company had done double SIM, and they were the only one that didn't do it, and they lost market share seriously. So the thing that you consider when you want to fly a plane is the cost of the plane, and how long we are laying over. Every airline is regulated internationally by IATA. So any plane you enter that is flying international has a certain standard that IATA has certified them. So the mm -hmm. war is going to be in the cost, in the rate. It's not patriotism. Sincerely speaking, that's why you have cheaper tickets, you have a Expedia and so on. What people do is they will see a, a, an agency that will bring out all the, all the rates. And you start checking, oh, this one is this amount, this one is this amount. It's not all about patriotism. It's an international war. So in this case now, it will be more strategizing than talking. I'm telling you, when you are working to go to the top, when you get to the top, don't start fighting everybody that we're against you because all of those fights against you we are the things that strengthen you to get on top. It's not the time to come, to come start fighting everybody that fought you when you were going up. They will be forced to follow when you succeed. But when you are going to the top, there will be always there will be, uh, 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 obstacles. So by the time you defeat them and go to the top, go to the top and face your business and not look down again and start fighting back all those people that fought you. I'm telling you, that's you strategy. That. That's the way to do business. You know that in this year, you know that in this business, in this, in this world of uh, aero, aero business, there is also part of it that is diplomatic as well. In fact, diplomacy play a larger, in, in, you know, in businesses, if you are running your business, any other business, most businesses, it has nothing to do with diplomacy other than government policy in the area of trade. That's all. But when it comes to Euro politics, Euro business, there is diplomacy, big one, that, play, that, that plays there. So that is, it is not business as usual when it comes to running an aero business. The government is directly involved. What your government do and does not do will determine how far local airlines will go. It is the government that will back their own airline. They back them up. That's not what we're seeing in Nigeria. Do you know when the former British Prime Minister, uh, the one before this, Johnson, I think is even they've had two before, before, uh, before we the uh, Sunak, uh, Boris Johnson, he said Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. These are the things he's talking about because they are part of it too. They connive with the Nigerian government to to give kickbacks to you know to give them some leeways in some areas and waivers in some areas. The British government know exactly what they are doing so that they can get what they want. And because the Nigerian politicians cannot hold their own, they can't stay firm and hold their grant that this is about national interest. This is about our nation. We can be, we can be, we can be corrupt, but there is a line. There is a My line. Brother, see now, it, does, does our government official fly any, uh, not, apart from private jets? The British Prime Minister doesn't have a private uh, airplane. It's because, it's because it. that is part of the corrupt. That's part of the You understand? But our people, our people are flying yeah. private jets everywhere. See, I've been to the, you see, the, the, the former uh, U.S. Um, tre Treasury. No, she's not even the former. She's it's not the former one. It's the, still the current one. Yelling. Ye the form Treasury, the Treasury Secretary. It's like Nigerian Central Bank governor. The uh, that's the governor no, no, of... Uh... The Nigerian Finance Minister. Equivalent of the Nigerian Finance Minister. The Treasury Secretary. See, he enter... I, I, the same flight is economy flight, economic flight from New York to Atlanta. In the same flight, I, I, I couldn't believe my face. But if she's going international, she got to use the government yeah, it, and the she, Secretary it, of State yeah, airline. Secretary of State. But within the United States, I mean, I couldn't be this is this is yelling. 
There was no nothing, no rushing, no nothing. You know, when you are at the US airport, how you will sit at the at the way at the gate. She sat at the gate, no police, no nothing. She sat normal, normal. And then they started calling the gate, group one, group two. She stood up, she went in. I saw her inside the same flight. So what are we talking about? You can never see that in Nigeria. That flight was like $170 or so. One way. So we can't see that in Nigeria. That, that just couldn't happen in Nigeria. So if, 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 in fact, the minister, we even use that to siphon. He will book the ticket. The ticket that is maybe 150, 200,000 naira. His ticket is already 1 million. That's what they will sign off for him. 1 million naira. The hotel per night, maybe 350,000. They will already book, book for him. 1 million naira per night. And he will say he will stay three days in Lagos. Lagos to Abuja, he will, stay, he will stay three days or four days in Lagos. That same night, he's returning to Abuja and he has collected... 1 million, 1 million, 1 million per night. Can't that one, and he can do that five, six times in a month. Five, six times in a month. So he's collecting two, 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 three million like that. In a, that one is just their change, their pocket money. That's why you will see there, say, I'm going to Bauchi tomorrow. I'm going to Lagos uh, tomorrow. I'm going Mr. to- Mr. Jonathan. Yes. You know what is happening? You know what is happening now? Yes. These politicians, these politicians know that Nigeria is not yet a nation. They know. That is why you see the abnormalities hoving around the country. The people, the people that made that um, constitution knows the aftermath effect. But what they are banking on Black Panther, are you there? We lost you, Black Panther. Okay, I guess he muted himself. I guess um, maybe something okay. came up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, as, I was, as I was saying. Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, I wanted to yeah. say that with the state of the nation, what we all are facing right now, unfortunately, a lot of us, most especially back home, are still not getting what is happening to us. <laughs> Everything looked like joke to these people. If I talk this to some people, they say no, they know, they know. These guys are not aware. Even though they are aware, they have moved on. They are not interested. If you check it's, it, it's, it's, it's a Nigerian, is a Nigerian thing. People that are living, we cannot continue these that. things. The Nigerian thing. Why these people are suffocating, suffocating us all the time? Is a Nigerian. You know, you know why I say it's a Nigerian thing. This past, this weekend, two days ago, I was talking to a brother in Nigeria. I couldn't believe my ears, what I was hearing. You know, Nigerians are so gullible. And the only the reason, the only thing that I could say is that or kind of cool down with him and accept or accept what he says is that he's in Nigeria. And I said, perhaps if I'm also in Nigeria or living in Nigeria, I might align with some of the things he's saying. Is that they, they're so gullible. They are already saying. They are already saying that the economy is working. They are already saying that Cardozo, Yemi Cardozo, governor of the central bank, is doing an excellent work. These are the things I was getting. Yeah, because of the because of the, the appreciation the, of Nara. and I was explaining and I was explaining I was explaining that see these are the things these are the things these are the things. But they said okay they know, but the way things are now, they think these things are going in the right direction. That there is no way Cardozo. And and, uh, and the finance minister uh, could uh, come and siphon or steal money that they believe in them that they will do the right thing, you know. This is so interesting. And then when I now told them that, uh, are you still buying your your bag of rice? They said it's still the same price. In fact, you re I, they told me that that um, electricity tariff that they increase 
that we saw last week that they're already paying it. I was surprised. I thought maybe maybe it's something that will happen maybe in a month's time or two. That they're already affecting it. That they, they're already paying those that are in band A. Those band A people, those are the rich people, the people that the class has maybe middle class, so to say, in Nigeria. They're already paying. That it's like now in Nigeria, now those category of people will be paying nothing less than 150,000 per month for an average home, 150,000 naira per month. But you see, they are not really complaining because they can afford it. But 95% of Nigerians cannot afford that. Even those that are paying 12,000, and now you want to take their 12,000 to 34,000, they cannot afford it. So there are so many things that they are not seeing. Nigerians are so, Nigerians are so gullible that they just, they just take things, you know, the way it comes. They believe their government so much. As I always say, that they believe the country is a normal country. That everything not that's what they, that's that's the advantage that these politicians are taking. You know, they deceive Nigerians a lot. Millions of Nigerians are there in Nigeria. They believe the government. Whatever the government says is just they don't even check it out to to see whether what these people are saying, even those that are educated. But at the end of the day, you will have to kind of. You can't dismiss them 100%. You still have to give them some. The fact that they are there, they are living there. there there's, there's no alternative. That's where they are living. So perhaps if we are there too, we might be thinking that way. You know? So that's that's the, that's the issue. That's, that's what they are enjoying. You know? That's what these people are enjoying in Nigeria, the Nigerian politicians. They are really enjoying that. They know that the Nigeria, an average Nigerian does not care what they do, does not care what they do at all in Nigeria. The as we're talking about the election, when because they know that, see, for every election in Nigeria, I think my brother said it, uh, Ike, that the election should we should boycott the election. In fact, that is the way to go if nothing is done between now and 2027. Because the moment you, you, the moment you, you participate in that election, you have legitimized them already. Let me tell Whether you something. You or not. Yeah. Oga Jonathan, I wanted to say something before these people started attacking their head again. But let me quickly say this. You are saying that these people, they believe on their politician or not believing on the politician and all that. Let me tell you what is affecting the people in Nigeria, many of them believe so much on their illegitimate source of income. Mm -hmm. That's why EC, let me tell you, anybody that is working in Nigeria, I can't say anybody, I don't want to generalize, but majority, 90% or 95% of Nigerians in Nigeria that is working in any sector, any industry, any angles, they don't rely on their salaries. They have a way of adding more money, making more money throughout the whole month, to add to whatever they are going to receive officially as a salary. For example, you know, uh, these people, on that one. yes, for example, these people, somebody actually told me, you know, uh, this couple of years ago, that no, if we say we rely on our salary, we don't make anything now, we must do one or two things with Uru to make sure, say, we raise some certain committed amount to add to our salary. And I say, how? He said they, 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 they deliberately create a problem for somebody within the industry that is seeking for their help, and they will also be the one that will sort that problem, but in 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 space of the person seeking for their help. I don't know if you get it. You understand? This is what these people are doing. That's why you see today in Nigeria, nobody or Majority of the people in Nigeria, where you go send message, may go buy something of five thousand naira for you, and the original price is really five thousand naira, and they will tell you the price is five thousand naira. Trust me, it's <laughs> difficult to find it. Very, very Nigeria. difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. That's if the that's price how, is five thousand naira. Yes, now if the price is five thousand naira, for example, they add one thousand naira to make it six thousand naira. Go even make sense. They don't do that. 
If the five, yeah. price is five thousand, they'll tell you it's twenty five thousand naira. Mm -hmm. They take more than hundred percent of it. More than they will, they will make even more than you. That is even. That this is, is the problem mm -hmm. of the country. So many of them have relied on all this petty, petty style of uh, uh, illegitimate source of income. Mm -hmm. Then they are not facing the main thing that is affecting us anymore. Mm -hmm. They seems not to be interested. This corruption that we're talking about in Nigeria, it has it has gotten into every sphere of life. Nobody is exempted. Mm -hmm. It's, it's oh, very, oh, very oh, that Jonathan. Yes. I told you that corruption is a norm, a culture in Nigeria, that every business or company, for any company to survive, you just got to participate in it. If you refuse it, then you face the consequences, which the consequences that even the Nigerian people will be against you. That is how corruption has gone. So the only way we can start or face it out in a percentage level that's about 80 percent to face it out that level we got to jump start the country we just got to jump start the My country brother, we how can, many people we can do jump it start the country that's the no main no problem, like. no no not not going out to protest like that we got to stand on our ground that we need our constitution we got to we've done it before that was why gj that's why GJ went for that. We let's can do take, it again. Let's take this call. I need to come back to this your statement. Let's take this call quickly. Uh, we have love. God is my strength back again with us. Good evening to you, madam. Please talk to us. Thank you. I, I think it's time we do this uh, program today. <laughs> yeah, my brothers. Yeah, my brothers. Thank you, man. Uh, good to you. You see, uh, when uh, Mr. Jonathan was saying something about Nigeria, and it's Nigeria too. Yes, so it is. So. You see, what you said, Mr. Nigeria, was is true. You see, Nigeria, majority of Nigeria don't want Nigeria to work. And people will ask me that why. I'm, I'm not talking of those in diaspora. I'm talking of those who are in Nigeria. They like it the way it is because they don't want somebody to come and come and pull law and will not stop them in their small small money that they are making in corners and all that they don't they don't like it but it's all of us here in that world we have seen the way we uh, 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 government to run the system and we enjoy it and you go to your work you go to anything you are doing you get paid according to what you do we know that a country should be made in the way that everybody nobody will be too rich than all that world of course will be maybe mostly on the same level like what he said is not a, a, a mp in this on the train we see it all the time even uh, when boris johnson was uh, on he was driving his keke all over the place people see him go to the local shop like every other person but in our country we don't see that when they want to go to buy anything, they will carry police. All the police that are supposed to be on the street working to secure Nigeria, all the army, uh, armies, they are carrying government back, carrying their wife back. So you can see when things happen, you will not see them on time. They will say no police, so police not there for station because they don't want them to support them to the big, big people finish when they go around with them. Then the common ones will not even have a way to even secure himself or the family unless he put every fence. And even fence now in Nigeria does not guarantee that you are safe. They can jump in, they can do anything and come in. So Nigeria is in a mess. Nigeria is in a mess. Everybody until we come to that place that all every one of us we start to respect the law of the country. Every man in that country, Nigeria, will be under the law. Nobody is above it. But the way the system of the country is being run, there are people who are above it. I'll quickly go to uh, Boriski. Yes, people say it's art. It's art. What is doing is not good. Everybody knows that. But let's be sincere. But risky Idris is not the first person who has thrown money on the ground. Thank you. We see it every time. There will some people they will pile it up as a mountain. And I'll be asking myself, where did they get this kind of money? No Thank respect for currency of the country. Thank you. So until all of us we are ready to say this must change, the constitution must be obeyed. Even okay. by the government, the president that is 
sitting. We will not go anywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank man. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's sad. It's very, very sad. Black Pata, please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Hmm. The situation we find ourselves in our country. Okay, Black Papata is not there right now. Where are, where see, are? I saw, like what I was saying. Yeah. I said they have made corruption a culture. And when something is a culture, everybody will learn it. Everybody is going to into that school. The school has been established. And every Nigeria, if you, if you as a foreigner, you come in and act otherwise, they will look at you strange. You know, they will know that you are a new person. Or maybe you are, you are, you, you are a Nigerian, but they will look at you strange. Now, don't you know what is happening? A culture that is there, and you are going against the norms, they want to fight you back. Because all the what the military has done, the damages the military has done, everything has killed us. Can you hear me? Is there anybody there? Hello. I can hear you, Mr. Evans. Okay. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Everywhere you're silent. The best Everywhere you're just silent. <laughs> you know, the, you see, the, uh, the, when we're talking about this corruption thing in Nigeria, is is what is our biggest problem of all. And it is this corruption that is actually enabling the Nigerian people to sit tight. It is corruption because see they are paying minimum wage of thirty thousand naira. The price of rice is eighty thousand between seventy and eighty thousand. These people that are earning thirty thousand, they grab back of back of rice oh, once in a while, and you will be wondering if nothing is coming from somewhere else. After all, it is not all Nigerians that are getting money from diaspora. Exactly. Because one of the cheap, one of the cheap uh, argument that we used to support is, oh, they are getting support from diaspora. How many Nigerians are getting money? Is it all Nigerians that are getting money from diaspora? It is not all. Millions and millions of Nigerians don't even have a friend abroad, talk less of a family member abroad that will be sending them cheap, cheap dollar or cheap pound every every now and then. But do so you think they, these people still rely that much on people in diaspora? They rely so much. There are so many Nigerians that rely so much on people in diaspora. There is no doubt about that, you know. And you can we can't help it. The Nigerian government knows that very well because you take the case of a husband and the wife. The husband is 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 in is in Europe. The wife is there with his children. Mm. With his children, he will he not pay school fees. Will he not attend to them? Will he not pay rent? So money is coming. Money or the wife. Will he not send money home? Or people who have age parents. Somebody is abroad and your father or your mother, they are in their late 70s, in their 80s. And probably they are pensioners. And you know they are not paying their pension. They are relying on their rent. You will know yourself because that is the house where you are brought up. In that same house where your father sweats to build, where you are brought up. That house now is what your father is. It's not enough to feed the old man. And you are now in Europe. So there are many Nigerians like that. 
So you, you, you will send money home. So they know, they know all these things. They know all these things that money will always flow in. And you know what they are doing now? The, the buru, the change, all those malam, they don't, they don't sell, they don't, um, they don't take your dollar again. They only sell to you. They don't take your dollar again. So if you go to mm -hmm. the Burudi chain, to those malam on the street now, in Lagos yeah. and Abuja, and then you take your dollar, say, please change this dollar to me to Naira. No, they won't. you have to go to the bank. You're walking into your bank to go and change so that the bank... So if I have you. dollar and I want to change it to, to Naira in the uh, those on the street, they won't take it? They will not take it from you. Wow. They will not take it. Unless, unless you have Naira. When you have Naira, they will take your Naira, the one that they have, they will sell for you. But if you want to get dollar, for, if you have dollar and you want to change it to Naira, they will say go to, the, they will, you have to go to the bank. You will walk into the bank. The bank will now change it for you. You know, that's why they make it almost the same, the central bank rate, so that when you walk to the bank, the bank will take that dollar from you. They will give mm. you their printed Naira. So they have grabbed in a in a in a in, in a short words, they have grabbed your dollar from you, and they know how much of that that is coming. They know how much of that that is coming. So this is the game they are playing. They are relying. But so what is that. the aim of this government? Then what are they trying to do? Is, what are they trying, trying to do is what they are trying to do is see. It is called suppress suppressing. You know they will, they want to they, they are forcing dollar out from people. They are forcing it out. When you force something out, so somebody who has maybe two thousand dollars under his mattress in Nigeria now, and he was open in January, February, is calculating in his head that this two thousand dollar now that is now he now has like three million because it's one point five. Today, his three million now is only two million because it's one one thousand or even less, and maybe before he wakes up tomorrow. It's already 1.8 million. So you will be forced to say, let me take even 500 or 700. Let me go and change it. And then you will go to the bank. Then they grab, you see, that's up. They force it out. So what they are doing is that they are forcing the dollar out from people. So people are taking their dollar back to go and give them. And they have printed Naira. We'll give you the Naira. You will now bring, will not take the dollar from you. They will not take the dollar from you. But you know where the problem is? Because Nigeria is import dependent. Nigeria is not a product, product, a productive country. So everybody is still going to go back to that same bank and ask for dollar. You see? They will go back there. They will ask for dollar. You, it's, not, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> People mm. will go now because if you are, if even if you are a small businessman, and you only need thirty thousand dollar. Normally, you used to go to the malam on the streets to go and change thirty thousand dollar. You will go to three or four malams and then change it here and there and put it together so that you can travel to go and buy your goods. Now you will go to the bank and tell them that I need dollar. How fast the bank will give you your dollar? Because if it is malam, malam will give you on the spot. Right away, they will count your naira. They will give you your dollar at the rate that they, they you have agreed on. So we want to see how what people don't know is is much more than the one that they know. What will happen is how fast and how efficient will the banking system be when Mister A go to the bank, Mister B go, Mister everybody the way people used to rush to Malam. To change money mm. when they are also rushing to the banks to change the dollar and then you have to tell the person bring this bring that do this do that there will be slowed down in the economy this thing this, this thing they are doing you see what they are doing i think it was black panther who said it and i agree with him it's all legitimacy because they know that if they can bring dollar down people will begin to respect them let's bring dollar down whatever it takes so that People will begin to respect this government. But, 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 but it but will not the stop moment, the. But do you think for the Naira, moment, do, you, do you think that dollar will still move above one thousand? It eventually, there's no mistake about that. Oh, 
anybody who is who is a, I, I said last week, I said if you person who, who doesn't agree, come and put if that your if you know you are sure, put your money. I mean, you say you put your mouth where your put your pocket where your where your mouth is now. Put your money down, take a bet. Dollar is still going up. Are you kidding mm -hmm. me? It's still it's going back up now. How do you want to do it? Let me see. You say what? I said, let me even check now. I said, let me see. I want to see what what the <laughs> what the rate, what the rate is right now. See, yeah, right now. Yes. Like... <laughs> you see, they can they can play all the game that they are playing. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. They can play all the game they are playing. At the end of the day, oh, it's really going up. Oh, it's going up again. Oh, okay. because uh, a pound was already 1002, now it's now 1382. And so, see, you know, the, you know, the naira. Mr. Elvis, you know, the lens I'm looking at it. Hmm? It's just that, see, when we are on the platform, because it's only, I think, it's only you and I here now, maybe some people that are listening. That's fine. Sometimes it's just that when you are on a platform like this, when there are certain things that you will say, people will think maybe you are blowing your own too much so that's why you have to keep quiet see when they do this thing eh we do this thing every day every day see if you go to the stock market and they are trading the stock if the broker the stock broker wants to buy if the shares is trading at ten dollar and the broker now wants to buy it at eight dollar Eh, all he will do, he will bring the price down to eight dollar, so that he knows that Mister A B C D, they have these shares in their hands. He will <laughs> force it them. <laughs> he will force this them. <laughs> okay, Mister Jonathan, this thing yeah. here, it looks funny. Ah, just three days ago, this thing was already one thousand two. What did they happen? It's going up again. See the arrow; they go up. Ah. One thousand three eighty two now. You mean the pound? The pound, yeah. yeah. That's still a good rate. How are you complaining? One thousand three, Mister Evans is a good rate. Oh, if you consider the fact that this thing was over two thousand, almost two thousand four, or even that above two thousand four hundred now. Where they go? So you know, because it's going up now again now. Mister Evans, eh? See, this is the time. That Nigerians will learn lesson, but still not all of not all. Oh, some people will get their hands burnt. Eh? That's your dollar you put under your mattress. They want to force you to bring it out. They will create fear. They will create I fear in you. Up, child, because so that you fear up, now, eh? then you will now start let, saying, "Ah, what am I doing? My money was let me take this call. Million. Let me take <laughs> my this money." Call. Mr. Shibis, thanks for calling inside. Thank you very much. Please talk to us. Yes, Niger Watch. I just want to ask you a question. Do you say dollar is a nine eighty? Yeah, yeah. As of yeah. yesterday, by yesterday, it was nine hundred and ninety something now, less than one thousand. Uh -huh. That means no. That's what I'm saying. That's what I just put on the screen. Now it's going up again. Even pounds out of day for yesterday, pounds was one thousand two hundred, one thousand one ninety nine. It's now one thousand three eighty two. Now it's going up.
like they make dollar come down so many things. But you you are not asking yourself that dollar you are praise you dollar you are you are happy that dollar is coming down that dollar have come down. Then what of those things that those things that rise then that went up? Are they are they have they come down? No. Okay, cement. Uh, the other day I saw cement. I don't know like seven thousand or eight thousand. But you see on other side, you know, bread is one thousand seven. There is one of one thousand seven. So all of these things, how much bread is before? All these things, Nigeria don't they don't they don't care about what government is doing. They care about their own business. But when you know, when you understand the government that the government has to do something for you to benefit. Even in 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 the economies, you know, but the, our our people back home they don't care about those ones. But it's very bad. Okay. That they don't know what this government is. It's bad. Thank you, Niger Watch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shimizu. All right, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Yeah, let's please. round up. Yeah, you see, Mister, you see what the, uh, the last caller said. Nigerians yes. care about their businesses. They don't care about they. They don't know that what the government is doing is affecting their businesses. But what they their own understanding is that if my business is not doing well, let me increase the amount of the level of corruption. How I'm making the money. I will continue to support the business as long as I'm still getting money from other sources. See, he talk about uh, May May Day or whatever they call it in Nigeria. You see, what they will attempt to do, I'm preempting them. I'm preempting them today. What Mr. Tinumbu will do, he will, he will attempt to, to increase the minimum wage come May 1st. He will attempt. That will be another blow. You know, the way he says subsidy is gone. The way he said mm -hmm. he is floating the Naira, which they have revealed, all of them now is all, is all lie, right? Is the same way they will raise at those two blunders. This will be their number three blunders. They have so many, but the top ones, the top two, subsidy remover, floating of Naira, they will have another, the one that will take the number three spot will be increase of minimum wage come May force. If they do that, if they are listening now, don't do it all. If you dare to increase the minimum wage, the way things will get, say they are buying rice now for 80,000, they will buy it for 120, 130. They, they, they dare not to do that because you were looking for legitimacy and you, you want Nigerians just to be clapping because they can't reason beyond their nose. I'm sorry. Everybody's thinking about their own business and their own pocket. If they increase the minimum wage, everybody also will increase prices because you that is working, they have increased your whole. How about that pensioner who, that is relying on his own house for rent? He will get his own salary increase too by raising his rent. How about that woman who is selling, who is not a sal government salary earner? Is she too we, we get our own salary increase by increasing the price of food and the price of services? So things will just go awire. So they should just think, wherever, wherever they are right now, I know they are, they, are, they are concluding right now. They should just take it cool. Just mm. take oh, a wow. step. Don't try to, don't, don't dare. Don't dare what to increase the minimum useful. wage. This is not the time. It should be, it should be this is not the time. see that this this uh, dollar rise again. To be honest, it should be this risk. See the, the dollar. The dollar thing will be going up and down, up and down. But the, the example I was giving earlier is very profound. They are taking people's dollar away from them. When they have taken as much as possible from people then this thing will bounce back again. They will take your dollar from you. That your dollar that you have been saving or everything like that. They will take it away because of fear. Fear is gripping so many people now. Somebody was thinking that he has 5 million two months ago. Now it's only 2.5 million. So no, he will wake up tomorrow. It's 2.5. It's now 2.2. He will run to the bank or to the man and look for a way to change it. Let me save what I can save. It's like, a, it's like bleeding, the, a bleeding body. All you want to do is to stop the bleeding. So they want to stop this hemorrhage. Let me quickly go and change. So the government grab that dollar from you. They know that there are billions of dollars in the hands of Nigerians. Billions mm. of dollars in the hands of Nigerians. And they want to use fear. Fear, this economic suppression. 
we are going to take it out from your hand. We will take it. And yeah, and it's working. It has worked largely to some extent. Hmm. People are already running Eta Sketa, throwing their dollar, giving it to them. They will take it from you. And then they are buying it from you at that cheap rate. If you want to buy your dollar back again, you will have to go and meet them upstairs when it's back to one five. So just think about that. If you cannot understand anything, just understand that. You will go and meet them upstairs. They have taken, they have turned your five million to two million. And you will need five million again, Naira. So you have to add three million to your two million. Remember, your money was five million before your dollar, but now they've turned it to two million. For you to get that same dollar back, you will give them extra three million on top of your two million. That's what is going to happen. And that you can take it to the bank is going to happen because the only thing that could have made it to be otherwise, that could have proven otherwise or could prove otherwise is if dollar, real dollar is actually flowing in into Nigeria. That Nigerians money, not borrowed money, Nigerians money is flowing in. Nigerians are doing business. They are bringing in pounds. They are bringing in euros. They are bringing in dollars and yen through export. They are bringing it in. Nigeria is selling the crude oil. Not the one they have sold, though. not the one that they have mortgaged. Though. They are they are bringing in the, the, the dollar through crude oil sales. It's coming into the economy. Fresh dollar there. But since all these are not the case, you remember... You remember Obaseki talk about this thing a couple of years ago. I think that was two or three years ago when he said that the, the consequences of printing uh, dollar uh, naira, naira and uh, you know, how and what will result at the end. You know, I'd like us to quickly reference to that before we round up. You know, to tally up what we are saying now. The world has changed. Nigeria has changed. The economy of Nigeria is not the same again, whether we like it or not. You see, we have been managing, we have been, since the Civil War, oh, we say money is not our problem. As long as we are pumping crude oil every, every day, there will always be money. So we have run this very strange economy and strange presidential system where people, go, the local government, state government, federal government, at the end of the month, they go and earn salary. We are the only country in the world that does that. Everywhere else, governments rely on the people to produce taxes, to produce and they collect taxes, and it's the taxes they use to run the local governments, the state, the federation. But the way we ran Nigeria, and subsequently the politics up till now, is that it doesn't matter. The country can go on holiday. The country can go and sleep. At the end of the month, we all just go to Abuja and we collect money and we come back and we spend. My brothers and sisters, I am an economist. I'm an investment banker. We are in trouble. Huge financial trouble. First, what we used to rely on, crude oil. Forget what you are seeing now at $70, $60 a barrel. It is only a mirage. It's only a question of time. But because the major <laughs> oil companies, Shell, Chevron, who are the ones producing, they are no longer investing as much in oil. Chevron is now one of the world's largest investors in alternative fuel. Shell is pulling out of Nigeria. So, in another year or so, where will we, where will we find this money that we go to Abuja to share every month? Last month, or this, we got fact for March. The federal government printed an additional fifty to sixty billion to top up. For us to share. Mm -hmm. We can remove subsidy. We say no. Next this April, next week again, we'll go to Abuja, we will share. 
Mm -hmm. By the end of this year, our total borrowings, the total we have borrowed is going to be in, in excess of 15 to 16 trillion. And my worry is that we wake up one day, like Argentina, the Naira will be 1,000, 2,000, it will be moving. Because How is that thing? We, we don't, we don't, you, you, you can imagine a family, you don't have money coming in, you're just borrowing and borrowing and borrowing without any means or idea of how to pay back. Jesus. And nobody is looking at that. Everybody is looking at 2023. Everybody is blaming Mr. President as if he's a magician. Wow. Let's leave that. <laughs> Mr. Elvis, you see, Obaseki said it all. Me. He uh, said it all, and all of that came to pass. Mm -hmm. Everything is prophecy. Everything came to pass. You know, you said that you will just wake up one morning and you will see the Naira that is just 2,000, 3,000. You know, it happened. What they, are, what they did, what they are still doing now is that they realize that, wow, this is happening now. They, now, they are now suppressing. They are forcing it back. You know, when you force something, you force it back. But there is how far they can go. You see, mm. there is how far they can go. It's not that that prophecy will not come to. That prophecy has come. In fact, everything is said there has come to pass already. It's already vindicated. Whatever they are doing now, it does not matter. Every bit of what is said there is, is, is vindicated. The money that like, they are pouring, yeah. how they will pay it back with what? Are you going to pay it back with printed Naira? You're not going to pay it back with printed Naira. Nigerians think today that we're selling crude oil. Uh, one on 1,000, whatever, you know, whatever the number is that we have money. Is. No, they are doing it, but they have borrowed the money already. So they are just taking the oil to pay back what they have borrowed. So nothing is coming in to the federal government pocket as we thought it should be on a daily basis. So they have to borrow, continue to borrow, continue to borrow. So it is like you are just getting yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. There's no way out. So everything is said there is just on in the, in the money. Oh, and all the all the prophecies have, have been fulfilled. It, all of them has been fulfilled already. So the government is just trying now to, to suppress it, telling Nigerians, oh, the Naira is doing well, you know, it's bouncing back. The Naira aren't bouncing back anything. You will ask yourself the simple question: how? Just one word. How? How is the Naira bouncing back? Let somebody come and explain it to us so that we can take it up from there. You are going to tell us how you are achieving it. I'm waiting. We already know what you are going to say, but we want you to stay say it. Because if we say it, people will begin, to, people, who don't understand, people who, don't, who don't, just don't understand anything. They will come with, you know, variety of, of, of reason, things that doesn't work, which... That's the reason why they can't even come out and tell Nigerians why the Naira is now bouncing back. Other than we have worked on the economy, we have put out the right policies. Which policies? Which policies? What you did simply was borrowing. What you did simply was borrowing. You took this European's money. This European, they brought in their money to you. I want to use it within a short period of time. But you are going to give them back their money. You see, they don't they give you their money and then they just fall. No, it's not a grant. It's an investment. You would give them back their money. When by the time they want to get their money back, how you will pay them back, where the dollar will come from, and how you will now be able to sustain the, the Naira at that point in time, we shall see. That's what everybody is waiting, you know, waiting to see. That's why. We can submit with all empirical facts that the Naira that we're seeing dropping now is not logical. It is not. It is it's forcing it. You are forcing it down. And at the end of the day, it is Nigerians with their little, little foreign currency savings that will be at the receiving end. They are taking your dollars away from you, forcing it away from you, and they will drain you. They will take it all from you. And you'll be left with nothing at the end of the day. Mr. Elvis, thank you. Yes.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you so much. Uh, we've come to the end of the broadcast, my people. It's been a long day, uh, three hours, 30 minutes. Thank you so much for those of you that joined the panel, Mr. Ike, or God, Mr. Jonathan, uh, Black Panther. It was just four of us today, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, at least we had the opportunity to express our submission properly. You know, when there's lots of people, uh, although it's beautiful to have lots of people, but the time is always uh, monitored. But when there's not a lot of people, then people can talk as they like. I appreciate you all, my wonderful people. Mr. Iris, sorry, yes, sir. let me just chip this in. You know, Nigerians, please, Mr. Iris, if you can do it, it will be great. Mm. Hashtag fly your piece. Because yes. one celebrity, one celebrity go buy now, they will be hashtagging one celebrity that don't buy finish. Mobad, the, the hashtag Mobad. Which one is more relevant? Please hashtag earpiece. Fly if you fly earpiece. Nigerians fly earpiece. That is one good news. At least that one is we have one news to 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 to, to dance around with. One good news. We are we are grateful that earpiece is flying. It is flying that way. Lagos, that is good news. At least we have that one. In the midst of all this bad news every day, this is one good news. And they should not they should not turn it to bad news for us. It is good news. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you so much. I think we need to do a campaign about that. I'll look for the right... Hello, Miss Iris. Can you hear me? Mr. Ivis, are you there? Hello, Mr. Ivis. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, before I acknowledge the people on the comment section, we missed Madam Origin, you know, we missed uh, Madam Luke. We miss uh, Madam Busy Brains. Although I, I've talked with Madam Busy Brains, you know she's she's passing through a very pathetic situation that she discussed with me, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to discuss it uh, publicly. That's why I didn't talk about it. But I just want you guys to pray for her, and uh, she will be fine soon by God's grace. Then she will be coming to join us again. So we, we have talked. I talked to her sometime last week. So, yeah, but we still miss her. You know, we miss uh, Mr. Edwin and uh, oh, again, many others, many others that is joining us and you're not here with us. I just want you to know we miss you. We might not be able to mention your name, uh, you know, but I want you to understand that we always uh, miss you on this platform, you know, have that in mind, you know. So, um, yeah, that's what we are doing here. Thank you very much, my wonderful people, for your time. Uh, we also miss um, uh, one of our sisters like that. She's also facing one or two things. Like I said, you know, these are the kind of things they discuss with me privately. <clears throat> but I don't know if I, you know, but they didn't give me per permission to pass whatever they are facing in the public. So I, I'm a very private person and I respect people's privacy you know, regardless of whatever it is, you know, yeah, I, that's why I'm very, very careful when it comes to things like this, but, but whatever anybody is facing, I want you to know that God Almighty will help you out of it. God Almighty will protect you, will protect everyone of us. Lady, Lady Eugenia, we miss you. I want you to know that we miss you, we miss every one of you. Now God, I will bless you now. Thank you so much, my people. Now, God will bless you now. So, we've come to the end of the broadcast. Uh, Mother of all, Mommy Diaspora, thank you very much, Mommy. I appreciate you always for all you do. Thank you for 
been there with us here every day. Arimi Adu, Peggy Modi, thank you, Mr. Johnson Emmanuel, Ray Aboa, Stella Masevedo, and God bless you, my people. I appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you. Kings, who's there. Thank you. Yes, sir. How about then, Sister Patricia? Madam Patricia. Yes, yeah, she, she will be joining us soon. She's on holiday. Yes, uh, Madam Patricia is fine. She commented last week she's on holiday. So, in fact, uh, Madam Patricia, she's in Nigeria. I don't think it's private. I don't think her travel, I, I'm not sure. That's, it's not private. So she's in Nigeria. So she's having fun. She, when she returns back, she'll be joining us again. You know, it's not easy to be in Nigeria and be joining a broadcast every day. You understand? You know, people that is doing it, I respect them. People like Alex and the few others, I respect them. It's not easy. You know, network problems before they become That's a problem and all that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Mofire, we can see you right there. It's good to have you on the comment section. Thank you very much. Friday, thank you. Now, God bless you, my people. Let's end the show. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Black Panther, you don't want to go comment session. You know, thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you. So, I would like us to round up the show right now. I'll see you guys again tomorrow, my God's grace, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. We're going to be together. So, governorship candidate, finally, <clears throat> on Wednesday, that I have my appointment, but because of this now, I could not uh, change it. So I have to put things together to extend my own appointment away so that I can grant the um, the governorship uh, candidate in those states, one of the three front runners. So they'll be joining us on, on Wednesday. So tomorrow we'll be bringing out the poster for you guys to know who we are talking about. So there's no need to hide it anymore so that, yeah, I try no fame, my dear sister. I can see right there. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. God bless you, all my people. And God bless you now. Thank you. Have a good night. Now go. Now go bless you now. Do your part. Press on the like button. Join us again tomorrow, 6 p.m. And let's continue to talk about the things that's affecting every one of us. Good night, my people. And bye for now.